celebrated 45 memorable years together. She and my daughter, Katie, are my anchors. Bob and Wendy spent time fundraising for healthcare causes. I guess I liked it so much, I decided to become a patient. In 2016, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I assumed that there was no hope for people with my diagnosis. Bob participated in a clinical trial that included cutting-edge radiation therapy and surgery. He's been in remission since completion. I'm so glad that I learned about what was possible for me. I'm Keisha Sharp. Since losing my mother to pancreatic cancer, I've been working to ensure that everyone facing this diagnosis knows about the immense progress being made. Stand Up to Cancer and Lust Garden Foundation are working together to make every person diagnosed into a long-term survivor like Bob. Visit pancreaticcancercollective.org. Furnished by Stand Up to Cancer. Lana was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma and it's cancer. As a parent, when you're told this type of news, you're going to do whatever you can do for your babies. When we got to St. Jude is when I realized that, no, you're not going to get a bill for anything. I don't have to worry about it. They're saying we're going to help save her. We're not going to charge you anything. This is what we do. St. Jude Children. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Live from the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale. Here we go. This is KQFN Tempe. Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM and k 240 u Fountain Hills at 95.9 FM. People settle down. Because it's time. Time for what? Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. All right, everybody. It's Thursday here on the Daily Blender. I'm your good friend, your radio pal, Jeffrey O'Brien, alongside Randy White. Got Keon Rose in the control room, and you guys are on the Fanatic text line, 888-368-1580, as we broadcast live in the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale. And so after a, uh, a rain delay, the Masters uh, has begun, and now the weather is quite nice, uh, except for Tiger Woods did not get his hot and humid like I think he had hoped for. I think he had wanted but uh, he's playing. How's he doing? I think he's not doing so good, is he? He's a, I think, uh, maybe one over right now. Right. Not so too bad. Is he over the cut line? I mean, uh, or is that, yeah. Well, it's, it's Friday. It's, so, I mean, yeah, it's Thursday. They'll calculate that tomorrow. So. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, wherever the leader is at the end of tomorrow's round, we'll calculate the, t- the, the cut line. So it's the leader plus 11. Every time I look at him, he looks like he's wincing. Uh, so is there like word on him being in, in pain or something? Because I, I was sitting uh, stand there watching somebody else do some stuff, and he just he did not look right. Well, he he, look he's right. actually not one over anymore. He's even. So now um, he's even par. Yeah. Okay. So so he's he's moving up a little. Um, yeah. That's cool. Uh, well, uh, we'll keep you uh, up to date on these things. But right now, as it stands, uh, Dishembu is seven under par, and he's got the lead with Shafufor, uh, who is six under par, right behind him. And then after that, there's a guy who's four under named Willett. And then there's Fox, Haven. I haven't heard any of these guys. So Willett, uh, former uh, Masters winner. Yeah, yeah. okay, sure. That, Danny that, Willett. That's, that was the last name you said I recognized. If you and say so. Then my guy Rory there, tied for six. So, like yeah, 20 it's people. Too early to, to worry about that. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, we'll keep you up to date. Uh, we'll have some uh, updates for you twice an hour as we go. I don't know if we're. Are they twice an hour now? I don't know. I, I try not to get involved. Anyway, I think they're they uh, were twice an hour. So. Yeah, I think they're twice an hour. So yeah. we'll we'll see what we hear. Anyways, uh, so that's going on. And then uh, we get the, uh, I didn't even know. I had no idea he w- even had a cold. But uh, O.J. Simpson is dead at the age of 76. O.J. Well, Simpson kicked the bucket. First day in hell. Yeah. Well, I don't have to worry about uh, O.J. anymore because uh, old Big George was like, tagging him on twitter when we yeah. were talking crap about him 
<laughs> why would you do that? This man has got two confirmed kills. Yeah. Why? Why would you put that? Put that uh, that energy out there. I don't understand. Now, so for a while, you know, I just I blocked him immediately. So if now, the glove doesn't fit. You cannot uh, uh, convict. Okay. It was, <laughs> now I, he's dead. Yeah. We don't have to block him anymore. And also, right. If, right. if they don't have a uh, a white Bronco slowly leading the funeral procession, then you know what? That's just a failure on everybody's part. Just, missing out an opportunity here. You just got to do it. You got to do yeah. something. I, I don't know who survived O.J. Simpson. Did nobody? Did Fred, the guy that was the dad of the waiter, no, no, did, did nobody. He, I know he was a Scottsdale guy. Hey, you're asking the survivors of O.J. Nobody. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the survivors of the situation. Mm. You know, like the anybody from the court case. Uh, well, that would be uh, Fred Goldblum's that's, dad. That's it. That's it. His name? No, that's his name. He's his name's not Fred Glo Goldblum's dad. He's just Fred. Fred Goldblum. Sure. And I don't even know if that's his last name. We know you're the guy with the curly mustache. Right. Mm. Which, you know, you lose a little sympathy for him when he's got a curly mustache. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't care what happened in your life. Curly mustache. Come on, man. Anyway. Unless you own the Jaguars. So Simpson had the cancer. Yeah. Did it? Was it ass cancer? You can only hope. I, I, don't, I, I don't think the details are out there, though. Berg says George will still tag OJ. Yeah, but I'm not as yeah. concerned about it now. <laughs> I don't. I can go out on the porch and get my mail. He's he's left mortal life. It's it's okay. I don't have to worry about anything <laughs> happening to me on my porch now. So, but uh, yeah. So OJ Simpson, it, karma sometimes is fast. Sometimes karma is slow. Sometimes that bleep don't work at all. So sometimes it's cancer. Yeah. Yeah, mm. what kind of cancer was it, though? I'm just kind of curious. Hoping it kind of kills you. I really hope it's ass cancer. It's like uh, they kill you, cancer. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have words. My understanding on it. is is he was getting treatment, so it was the cancer treatment that killed him. McMama says it was prostate. No, oh, well, close enough. Yeah, that works, mm. McMama. That works. It's a good, good first hour here. I'm just mm. saying. People have always said to me in my life, oh, "I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy." Mm. Well, hell yeah, I would. I'd worse, I you know, if, if they're if, if you're not going to wish cancer on your worst enemy, I don't know what you're saving it for. You know, I do. I wish cancer on all sorts of people. <laughs> a lot of a lot of good points here. Yeah. Sometimes they're war criminals. Sometimes they're racist. Sometimes the guy who cut me off. I don't care. I'm fast well, I mean, and free and loose with the cancer. I mean, the, the the guy that cut you off. I mean, really, is that is that worthy of cancer though? Well, it is to me at the moment. Yes. <laughs> all right. So I'm it's just saying. Hard, hard to argue that point. It's like, oh, don't I mean, say that. I, I don't think he oh. actually deserves it, but you feel like he does. Don't say that. You feel like a guy that cuts you off is worthy of cancer. Don't don't tell me not to say something because me saying it isn't going to suddenly karmically. Bloop, there's ass cancer. Oh no, I could, I felt it happen. Yeah, like right if you there. if you could speak it into existence now, that, mm. now you've got to maybe pump mm. the brakes on that. that but just yeah, just, go, just go ahead, wishing pal, it. I, go ahead, uh, go ahead, pal. I hope you get pancreatic cancer. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, you're, you, you listen, I, I mean, like I said, if they're an enemy and you're saving it up. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> it, it doesn't roll over, you know, once, once you're gone. You don't get to carry you, it on. You, you don't get to right. spend it later. Mm. I wish That's ill will point. on everyone yeah. who opposes me. Wow. What's wrong with that? That's just at least honest. You know, it is, it is honest. Mars Mars 805 says not so happy Thirsty Thursday. The glove finally fit. Rest in peace, OJ. And I'll take an 805, please. Really? And really? Why, I, really, why is it not really? so happy? Are, really? Am I, am I pouring him an 805? Who's He's mourning asking. the passing of OJ Simpson? Other, That's I mean, my point. Hmm. Do I really pour him an 805? I'm going to leave really? that to you. Hmm. Big George, you, you can, you know, stop tagging us in serial killer Twitters, please. That, that'd be hmm. nice. Appreciate it. He says, uh, now OJ is dead. Is it okay for me to tag him? No, just leave it leave it alone. Leave it alone, George. Yeah. Leave it alone. Rough Rob says, Stabby McStabby. Officially in the baggie. That almost rhymed. Almost, I see what you're yeah. trying to in do the, there. In the baggie? Stabby McStabby in the baggie. Huh. Yeah, it's good. It's not even close. Yeah, it's all right. Short notice. He's doing what he can. Well, all right. Swazman says, I'm pet sitting in Tempe. Okay. Cool. Congratulations. 
are lucky. Is he watching frogs? Or... <laughs> no, if we're hey, oh. if you're watching frogs, they'd be oh, he's a puppy. He sent me a picture. No, yeah, oh, it's a puppy dog. He no. says, I'm sitting in Tempe with a dog almost as tall as me. He's a five foot two Great Dane named wow. Garth. Garth. Ding dong, the douche juice is dead. I see what you're hmm. trying to do there. Uh, Points for the attempt. Yeah. There's a big ass dog right there. You see yeah. a picture. There's a big well, ass Great dog. Danes. Great Huge. Danes are large. Huge. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's uh, that's what's going on. The the masters are happening and uh, OJ Simpson dead. Did you know he was sick? I what? didn't know he was sick. No, it didn't didn't come up. I mean, recently he was even like tweeting about something. Did you care? He was showing he was, he was showing up on somebody's podcast mm-hmm. like multiple times. That's the last time I saw him, like clips of that on Twitter. And he's like, ah, this ass cancer. Okay. <laughs> Just another face in the crowd says, Randy hit the nail on the head. If you're gonna wish cancer on an enemy, make it pancreatic, because that's ninety four percent fatal. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Because it, it, sometimes it can go too quick, <laughs> but it's it's painful and uh, well, I know, but you, I'd rather make it last. So some other mm. kind, please, and also one that's just genuinely while that so person is alive, sort of embarrassing for them to talk about. Yes, that gives them hope, and then uh, it, it, oh, and then uh, it, it, it gets a gets them again, and then gives them hope, and then gets them. How long do you want this uh, this cancer to go on? Depends on the person. I'll get back to you. Cause, cause so if, if it's OJ say... Simpson, what would you, what would you wish on OJ? Uh, well, uh, to feel like uh, you know he maybe he's gonna make it twice, you know, and then die. <laughs> twice so pan- for the two. Pancreatic. So twice, you want... twice for the two that he uh, he maybe stabbed. Maybe like lung cancer or I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm not getting picky about it. I want him to die miserably. It's just if you if well, someone I mean, says, "Hey, cancer. do you have you have cancer?" and you say, "Yeah." What kind of cancer? If you say lungs, mm-hmm. that that's normal. Well, you see, know, the, the people lung don't cancer, mind talking about that. If you have to say it, ass cancer, then you no, we, we don't have to talk. You know, I'm pretty just, sure just Jeffrey cancer. and I would just go. We have the ass cancer. <laughs> yeah, but most people are. Uh, I'd do it if I get skin sure. cancer. I'll say ass cancer. Yeah, I'm that. pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Wilver says this is likely a question for Randy because he's a little bit more my age. Uh, Randy, do you remember when OJ broke the record for getting over 2,000 yards? Was that a game or uh, that was played in the snow? Uh, why do I think it was a played in the snow game? Wasn't it? Well, for you, everything's a little hazy oh, when boy. it comes to the visuals. <laughs> I think it was a snow game, and I could have been a clear day, and it just looked like it to you. It. Don't care. Mm. You yeah. know, sort of hazy. Hmm. When John Cena sees Mr. Wilbur, he turns his hand around the other way. Oh, no. Come on. I don't even know what that oh, means. Oh, no. Hey, we mm. had uh, we had uh, a pretty good night last night. We, we uh, as far as Phoenix goes, uh, yeah. Donnie did not. Donnie uh, felt the karmic sting of uh, the Timberwolves losing, and, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that. But listen, to that. we uh, we won a, a, a hockey game. Yeah, uh, the Arizona Coyotes uh, came four, from three. behind, by the way, mm-hmm. in overtime over the Canucks. Thank you, Mr. Cooley, uh, for making that happen in the OT. So that was kind of nice. And then uh, the Diamondbacks uh, it won five three over the Rockies. So that was uh, that was pretty good right there, right? Yeah. And by the way, uh, is, are they playing today? Who? I believe, I believe they're off today. Yeah, yeah they're, they're off today. And St. Louis comes in okay. uh, starting tomorrow. Oh, that's right. The Cardinals are coming to town, and then. Uh, Miss St. Louis. Brandon Fat is going to uh, start on fought. that one. Fought. Don't care. And then uh, the Suns uh, were able to, wow, really pull a tough one out against the bench. You're uh, damn right. You're damn right. They, the Suns won last night, baby. Yeah. The Clippers bench came out, and none of their starters, James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, uh, Ivica Zubak, Russell Westbrook, all of them. Too scared to get off the bench. And then the Suns worked really hard and struggled and had to come from behind in the fourth to beat the Clippers bench. But by God, they did it. Who was that cat that uh, for a for the Clippers? What what, what was his name? Inglewood? No. Uh, uh, Sherwood? Uh, what was his name? Uh, the guy that. Uh, uh, Disneyland. What was the guy's name? What are you talking I, about? The guy for the Clippers. What was his name? Uh, which uh, guy? Uh, which guy? Uh, ice cream. What was the guy's name? Yes. Uh, they had a ice dude cream. off the bench. Ice cream. Uh, sure. Uh, 
What was his name? Come on, Keon. You should I, know this. The hints aren't helping me get closer yeah, to what you're talking about. Hints I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, you're, I'll God. bring it up. Hold are on. You, are you Ice cream. Me? I, I'm looking yeah, at the roster right now. I don't know who you're talking about. You're not looking at the roster. Are you on, talking about uh, Boston yeah. Jr.? Uh, who had 23 ooh. points? Because there's nobody even near What's that. His name? Highland Boston? had 37. Brandon, Brandon Boston. Yeah, it was, no, uh, Bones. 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 Bones Highland. That just, was it. Just said Rick. Highland. Bones Highland. That That is not even close to any of the things that you said. Englewood, <laughs> yes. I was, I was never going to guess Bones Highland yeah. from any of those. You said no, ice no. cream something or other. What? Can't you say you never <laughs> want to play Pictionary with Randy? Bones Highland. You don't That's want him on guy. your team. You, you, you lose real bad. What's your point Next. about uh, Highland anyway? We had 37 points last night. Yeah, I mean, was, uh, this guy, guy was awesome. on. He was on fire. He's embarrassing. That he was is, embarrassing. He is win. a good player. I don't know if he's 37 points good, but uh, he was last well, night. He was last night. <laughs> that was a sad win for the Suns. You should not feel good about it. No. You'll, you'll take it because it literally counts as a W in the win column, but you don't feel good about those. So what in the hell uh, happened in the fourth quarter where the Suns had 32 points, but the Clippers had 15? I have a hard time believing it was defense. I mean, I do. I I, I very easily believe that defense is, is a factor there because the team... We're talking about the Suns, though. They here. don't engage in it for the whole game. It's not that they can't play it. They've played it many times this season. Hmm. This team, when they when they played, uh, who was it they played the other day? It, it, it was a, it was a 97-87 they, game. They played the, the cherry pickers. Uh, it, it was the uh, the Apple men, uh, the brewery, uh, I, brewers. No way. Uh, again, I Randy, no. just I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, they, when they played Minnesota, that was a low-scoring defensive game. Right there, see, they play they play defense. They're capable of it, but then sometimes the switch just turns off, and I don't know why that happens. I I can't predict it. I don't know. Like, you should never turn that off. That's the thing that makes the team go. You get more opportunities. You get more second chances. I I don't I don't get it personally, but we're here now. All right, I feel so like the, we've I, got... I feel like the Clippers gave us a a, a gift last night. It's the way I feel. Yeah, they're just resting their guys. Yeah, they're, they can't really move too much from where they are, so there's no point for them. And yet, it was that hard for us. So now you got the Kings and you got the Timber Pups, uh, and that's it for the season. And I, uh, I I think we just need to get used to the idea that, uh, that the Suns are going to be in a plan, and that's the way it is. I, I wouldn't get used to that idea. Not, I am. Not, not just yet. It's it's It depends on, like, tonight, for instance, big game with the, the Pelicans and the Kings. The Suns and the, and the Pelicans, if they have the same record, the Suns hold the tiebreaker on that. They would jump out of the playing game. Pelicans would fall in, and that would be basically all she wrote if the Suns can hang on and win out. Suns are going to be in the plan. That's just I, it. I I don't know that for a fact. I do. Um, so we'll Book see. It, bank it. Whatever you say. We'll we'll see because they they who they have left on the schedule. It's a lock, you, I believe. Is does what anybody want to bet me I, on those this? Those aren't words I'm going to use. But it's a lock. When you talk about the Timberwolves and the Kings, they they're pretty much locked into the spots that they're going to be locked into. So when you play them, presumably, get more bench games. Yeah, well, as you can see, that's not a lock either. I'm not saying it's a lock. That's why I'll take that. That's, bet. Why, that's why I'm not. I'll take that bet, Jocko. I'm not betting you. I'm just also not. Uh, Suns, uh, <laughs> Suns will not be in the play, and the Suns will be in the sixth seed, and the Pe- uh, Pecklands will lose uh, tonight. I don't feel right betting against the Suns, but on this one, I'll bet against the Suns. All right. So what hey, do you want to bet? Pizza lunch. There you go. Done. Done deal. Done deal. Listen, I'm pulling for him. I want to lose this bet, but I just, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Pizza lunch. Uh, Suns I, will be not in the play, and they will be in the playoffs. The now, Pecklins uh, will be in the play. Now, if they if they win their next game, then they are they are locked into top eight. Who? Which the Suns? Which matters because if you. If you win the first play-in game right. as a seven or eight, right. you're just in. You don't mm-hmm. have to continue playing to try and figure out anything else. 
if you end up in that 9-10 range where the Lakers and the Warriors look like they're going to be, you lose that, you're done. That's I feel like if you're night. locked in the top eight and, and you win your next game, uh, okay. you're pretty much in. No, no problem. You're just repeating what Keenan said. <laughs> Average Joe says, someone call an ambulance. Randy's having a stroke. What? I think he would wait till he was in private to do that. Uh, Ralph has crabs says, hi, Jeffrey. I heard the great American football hero, OJ Simpson, passed away at 76. Gone too soon. No, he's not. Not mm. soon enough. Not soon enough. Yeah. He's a murderer. Uh, mm. Walter Mellon says, hey, you guys ever stop to think maybe the Suns are doing all this on purpose? You know, part of the grand plan to let everybody think that they're weak, you know, and then they're going to come out in the playoffs and they'll crush it in sync playing as a single unit and win the championship no no, no not that they're doing that. it on no. purpose is there is there another level they can reach no. yeah I, th I think there is but no. i also don't know that that's something that you can turn that off and on like a light i think you have to you have to be in that mode all the time they're too inconsistent to be doing mm. any of this on purpose yeah mm. no no no. no. All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, we got more NBA stuff to talk about and more Daily Blender stuff. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic. This is Brent Musburger's action update on 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. Get insights into the sports betting market with v betting splits. See where the money is and keep updated on how the market is reacting only at VSIN.com. Now, here are the latest lines from my guys in the desert. NBA tonight, the Phoenix Suns are in Los Angeles to take on the Clippers. Phoenix is a three-and-a-half-point road favorite, minus 106 against the spread. The Clippers, plus 114. On the money line, Phoenix minus 154, Los Angeles plus 130, with an over-under of 226-and-a-half. Also tonight, Denver at home taking on Minnesota, battle of the top two teams in the Western Conference. Nuggets coming off a win Tuesday in Salt Lake City are a six-point home favorite, minus 230 on the money line. The Timberwolves are plus 190, with an over-under in the minus Mile High City at 212 and a half. I'm Tony Desiri with your Visa Action Update on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ken Barkley here reminding you to check out You Better, You Bet. Why, you ask? Well, because we bring the fun, the insight, and all the wagertainment you need. Plus, hopefully, we win a couple bets along the way. From up-to-the-minute breakdowns of backdoor covers, bad beats, and the cheers and tears that come with them, obviously. Plus, betting analysis from some of the best minds in the sports wagering world. Join myself and Nick Costos and tune into You Better, You Bet. Weekdays from noon to 3 on Arizona Sports Betting Station 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. Hey, Kim. Are the Suns playing the Clippers again tonight? Uh, they they are not. Huh? Uh, if he's an update, there thinks they are. Do you think we'll get another win? Um, hope so. Then keep playing that one. Because if that helps us get another win, I'm all for it. Yeah. Where'd my pen go? I had a pen. Now I don't have a pen. Oh, there it is. I, I got to have a pen in my hand. Uh, uh, people uh, have their own quirks. My quirk is if I'm on the radio, I got to have a clicky pen in my hand. It has to be a clicky pen. If it's not a clicky pen, then I'm not I'm not quite right. I, I, don't, I don't click it, but I just got to have a clicky pen. And... Mm. My yes. headphones have to be just right, mm. and they have not been right the entire show. 
Mm. So I'm all out of sorts right now. Testing one, two, three. Testing testicles, one, testicles, two, testicles. One, two, three. Wah, 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 wah. Five, five. Are you okay now? I don't know. Keon wasn't even looking at the levels. Like, mm. like the entire time we were, we were five, testing our levels and he's not five, even looking at them. Five. You know what he's <clears> doing. <throat> Hello. Uh, fixing the next update. Ah. Oh, what was wrong with the last one? That one was amazing. The Suns won again. Uh, Noah says the Suns are playing the Clippers again. Yeah. Damn. Three games in three days. That's a bit harsh. NBA schedule makers must have it out for the Suns. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying right there. Hmm. So I, uh, I I missed one other good thing. I think we mentioned it in passing. Nikola you Jokic. Nikola today? Jokic. Yeah. You scamp. Oh, just beating them Timberwolves. You scamp, you. Uh, I keep telling Donnie. And stop how did being Nikola, a troll. Stop being did, a, you know, a bad guy. You being a Nikola heel. Jokic. Single-handedly beat the uh, well. He put up forty-one, so like just I mean, about, just right. about, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> we need a forty. I mean, he didn't. He didn't look stoppable last night. Uh, forty-one uh, points, eleven rebounds, and uh, of course Jamal Murray was there. Was there was twenty. Michael Porter Jr. with eighteen. Yeah, they uh, they're getting hot at the right time, aren't they? Yeah, by right time, I mean just to beat Donnie's Timberwolves. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing, too, is the Timberwolves have basically been the number one seed for most of the entire season. And then at the very, very end, Father no part. Oh, so bad. And it's uh, directly attributed to the karma of Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> On the same could, day that, the, that Donnie could, decided to be the lowest yep. version of himself. You could you could trace <laughs> that back to Donnie. Well, oh, yeah. Well, he was saying that uh, he, he was uh, mocking fish tanks uh, pet dying on the Twitter. Oh, that's right. When yes. You start doing okay. that kind of nonsense. Yeah, you can't do that. The Donnie. universe is going to punish you. Yeah. And everyone around you. And usually through your teams. Well, usually it's just it's just you getting just, punished. He might want to go to the proctologist. That's all I'm saying. Maybe. So Big George says, are you a ballpoint pen, a gel pen, a fountain pen kind of guy? For me, I like the ballpoint pen. Um, well, when I'm doing the show, I like this. Uh, um, one of our listeners gave me uh, an American Express pen, and it's a metal. It's quite nice. I've had this for about seven years, and it's just the right weight and size. So this is my show pen for a long time. But I don't care. It could be a plastic pen. It could be any kind of pen that's a clicky pen. I got it in my hand, and uh, it just, I like it. That's all. So uh, I'm not particular about as far as writing. Dude, it's 2024. Who's using a pen right now? Who's using a pen much? I mean, see what I'm saying? I take notes every day, though, you, like in, in my notebook. <laughs> OK, what about the people who have wronged you? It says no, just something uh, just you should about be worried about show notes. No, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that's all. Not many people use pens on a regular basis or is, you know, I mean, I feel like we're all typing into our phones and computers now, right? Not a whole lot of pen usage going on. I, not that I can think of. Not unless you've got like an important document to sign or something like that. I could be politician style completely out of touch on this. But now I'm curious. So if, if you're listening right now, uh, and, and if you are, well, you've got bigger problems, I guess. Uh, but if you're listening, uh, do you use a pen in your everyday life? How often do you use a pen? I know that you have a pen, Randy. I can see you have a pen. Mm. But really... How often in the course of a day it's or the even one a I week? Use. It's the one I use all the time. Yeah, I know, but what are you writing on there? What? I mean, well, I, I, I write. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, notes I write. I have uh, uh, pads I write on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How often? All Every the time. single day. You guys are all writing. All the time. Monday through Friday. Easy. It's a very rare thing where I have to grab a pen and write something down. No kidding. Yeah. It's all computer, all phone, all, all you know, whatever. I also like my cross, my silver cross pen. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's a nice. One. Well, the other thing is I print every single page of story that we do on the show because I don't well, like who, to interact with the computer that way. Who so. uses a printer? anymore? Everybody with a computer? No, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. A, a lot of people are just not hmm. printing things. Just <laughs> yeah, anybody who's printing things is printing. 
Uh, Ray Ray says, guys, I think we should all meet up next Wednesday at the Mullet Arena for what is most likely the last Coyotes game ever in the Valley. Who Plus, cares? they're playing the Oilers, so I'd love to see the Coyotes win. Listen, well, I, I would, uh, I think it'd be fun. I'd like to go. I would love to, but the, the tickets, too damn expensive. Yeah, they're, they're expensive, and I don't want to give money to a guy that can't even guarantee the team staying in the city. Bye. Yeah. Bye. No, you're well, not, not going to get a payday on the way out of here. So. Stick, stick around and you'll make some money or see you later. I'll miss Bye. the players. I'll miss the team. I'll miss them playing. I'll miss us having a team. But outside of that, I'm okay if they leave. I'll yeah. go watch Sun Devil Spe- hockey. Specifically ownership. Exactly. exactly. That's you what know, I'm going to do too, Randy. You know, if, if you don't. Sun Devils and Roadrunners. If you're not committed to being here, see ya. Fish Tank says, I'm old school. Write my notes down at work while all the kids use a computer. Also, G2 pens only. All of the pens are inferior. I think that's what Randy just said. Uh, yeah, I, I have the uh, G2, the, uh, the the pilot G2. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that that's gel a pen. One. That's a nice one. I like the black ink, though. Okay. I like blue ink. That's just me. You're like a blue ink guy? Yeah. Average Joe says, I rarely print any uh, anything anymore, the printer, but I use my pen every day and probably go through a pen every three to four weeks. My Toll Gel Pen, that is my favorite. Uh, Big, G2. Big G2 George, is what you got to do. Big yeah. George, the lawyer, of course you're using a pen. He says, yeah, but I, I, I do sign a lot of documents. Seems like to me, though, Big George, you you would you would get that docu sign so you don't have to sign Ka-chink. so many. Or a stamp. You well, can just you, email the legal yeah, document you just get to the somebody. Docu sign, yeah. uh, the PDF docu sign. Mm. Uh, the verified docu sign. You yeah. know, according to him, he's just easier to grab a pen and sign it. He's his legal system mm. loves killing trees and putting everything on paper. Mm. I mean, I, I as soon as I'm done with this, I, I'm killing trees like crazy over the last you know thirty mm. years. I got all this stuff here. Everything we talk about, it usually I'll fit everything on one page for each thing we talk about. And on a lot of people complain about this show, saying you guys move too fast. You don't talk about anything for very long. Well, yeah, it's because that's what we do. That's the show. So uh, we, we move fast, uh, keep up or go find a, a, a less uh, you know intellectually challenging show. But mm. uh, so these pages, each one of these pages seven. is something we talk about. What? Huh? Sorry? Mm-hmm. No. What? Just saying. Hmm? So Manitoban Moose says, I'm worried. OK, he's worried about Keon. He says, I think Keon, Moose is worried about Keon. He's worried he's keeping the list and is going to go John Wick and all the asses of the uh, super fans of the fourth dimension. Mm. No, it's just show notes. See, I never took sure. Keon for an ass man. Hmm? What? Fish Tank says, I also find I uh, just remember things better if I hand write them down. Yeah. yeah, it's a similar thing for me when I what once I write it down, I almost don't ever have to refer to it again. Because I wrote it. If I oh, don't write it, then it, it doesn't stick as well. It's not true to me. I have to I have to write things down. Then I've got to scratch them off as I go through. them. See what I mean? You know, what I've started doing is I'll take a, uh, a photograph of our shopping list, uh-huh. which is on the whiteboard on the side of the refrigerator. Oh. And then I do the edit the phone, edit the picture thing. And then my finger scratch. I scratch out the stuff on the list. And I'm thinking, uh-huh. well, I could just have a piece of paper for this. Seems kind of silly. I mean, what, just using what, my what phone do you for normally scratch off? Hmm? What do you normally scratch off? The things after I buy them and put them when in the... you when no, when you take a picture of them, I know you're scratching things off before you buy them. And what are those what are those things you you scratch off before? Is that the uh, is that some of the things that uh, Alex likes? No, some of those, I uh, don't listen. If she high puts on high li- protein greens, you mm-hmm. as a uh, also married man know what? that if there is a list. Yeah. And you don't bring something back on the list. See, I don't go. You're to the, gonna hear about it. I don't go to the store. I my job is to go pick it up. Uh, Miss Kim, she uh, she calls the store, and then I go pick up the, uh, you know, the the mercantile. Mm-hmm. No, I, don't I, I, order I, I like to walk through the store. I actually don't mind I shopping. Don't, see, we don't do that anymore. No, I don't mind. And Miss Kim asked me what's what what do I want from the store, and generally I get what I want from the store. You got to be careful not to shop while you're hungry. No, I never, I never go shopping. So, okay, we've established that. I'm not talking mm-hmm. about you anymore. I'm just saying in general, yeah, you, should, you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't shop while you're hungry. That's all. You know, I, I'm coming to the the conclusion you should never shop when you're hungry. I should have taken a day off. I feel like today hmm. would have been a good day to take off. Are we done yet? 
888-368-1580. So uh, let's, uh, I didn't want to, this is a weird transition to go from, I don't know what the hell we were talking about to this. Groceries. We were talking about groceries. So, okay, uh, I, can, I can make this segue. Watch this. I'm a pro. Right. I'm a pro. Right. So Nate Robinson is shopping for a new kidney, and if he doesn't get one, he's going to die. That mm, that is that is wow. a transition. I was expert level. Mm, it's, mm. It, it's right up next to expert. Yeah. Why? Well, well, yeah. How is he not finding a, a kidney? Right up next to it. He's got some money. Well, I mean, he's uh, well. probably not liked by <laughs> many people. A lot yeah, of people but, like Nate Robinson. Yeah. Who? Name one. Keon. No, well, yeah, I mean, for starters, but I, I mean, I think Nate Robinson. Keon, why haven't you a, donated your kidney to well Nate liked. Robinson? You have two. Yeah, that's pretty selfish of you. I mean, yeah, but I don't know Nate Robinson personally. <laughs> wonder if, uh, yo, Fish Tank, good idea. How's OJ's kidney? Maybe Nate Robinson can have another. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we well, go. Well, if it wasn't cancerous, you know. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Because, you, because the cancer, you don't want to. Probably not a good idea. Mm, never mind. Yeah. It, there's no way to know. Mm. So here's what the thing that kind of scared me. I was reading the story about the Nate Robinson, and he's like, yeah, it turned out I got the had the really high blood pressure. And he said, when I was playing, yeah, I would they'd say, hey, if your blood pressure is high, you, you, you shouldn't play. And he says, well, the hell with that. I'm playing anyways. And he says, I was young, and, and I felt I was invincible, but I didn't know it was going to catch up to me. So it was high blood pressure that took out his kidney. I'm like, holy crap, I got high blood mm. pressure. Mm. Now I got to worry about a kidney. Ain't nobody well, going to give me a kidney. You're, you're not playing at a high end of basketball, right? You're not. Uh, you're not playing clearly. The point like professional, is professional sports I of any kind, right? Still need to worry about high blood Why? pressure like anyone Why? else. If you're not stressing your kidney out by, I mean, playing professional I don't think sport, only it, playing basketball yeah. is how you lose a kidney. Right? I, I, I think mm. I think that the, your kidney is stressed even without the basketball. The basketball well, simply does not help. Didn't I understand you to say that Nate Robinson was uh, playing in spite of his high blood pressure? Yes, but that that so he accelerated it. But so then clearly, if you have high it. blood pressure, that's still there very. There are bad. other things you can do. It doesn't have to be just professional basketball. Huh. You know, uh, there are other things uh, regular people can do to well, then screw their kidneys up too with high blood pressure. What would those be? I wonder. Why are you trying to kill and, the show today? Any cardiovascular activity. That just it's all the blood high blood pressure is already How about taxing your kidney. Doing a show with if, Randy today is gonna probably is probably going to help spike that. Yeah, probably. I'm gonna need a kidney. <laughs> but if you I'm set just, I'm asking the questions that everyone wants. Well, if let's you, say if you I set worked on, out too hard for my uh feeble body uh, with a high blood pressure, you can achieve clearly, the Jeffrey, same we problems. know that you don't work out. Not we, me, we but anybody with high blood pressure. <laughs> He, okay. he was able to do it in a couple of right. years right. that maybe it would only take me uh, 10 or 20 years. But still, the 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 fact that you can kill a kidney with high blood pressure, that's a little scary. That's all. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's taxing your kidney, even if all you did was sit on your ass and twiddle your thumbs. The fact that he played basketball through it, accelerated it, but it's still not good. It's, it's still scary. <laughs> you have cameras in my house. How do you know I sit on my ass and twiddle my thumbs? I just chose a random example. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know that you do that. You're so out mm -hmm. of shape. I don't think you could even twiddle a thumb. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> You'd be like, "Fump!" Oh my side! Oh, uh, oh my kidneys! I pulled a thigh. God dang it! <laughs> Walter Melvin says, "Is today Friday? Did I miss Thursday?" I'm all out of sorts because I'm hearing the show weirdly in my headphones, and that always messes me up. That's why my rhythm and my, uh, you know, performance is not quite right. Maybe I should just go ahead and log off. It has nothing to do with you. Take the rest of the day off. That'll this help you This part out. has nothing to do with you. <laughs> my headphones, not because of oh. you. Oh, and Randy. Randy I was is, trying to help is, you yeah, out here. Randy is gunning to get <laughs> off. Nice <that>. try. <laughs> Randy would love nothing more. <laughs> Just another face of the crowd has a good point. He says the obvious cancer, uh, cancer, oh, no. the obvious answer to all the unnecessary questions being asked. Google it, Randy. Just Google it. Oh, Pinocchio's just offered me a kidney. 
He says, uh, I can give you a kidney, Jeffrey, but if you need a spleen or an appendix, I'm down. I'm out of appendixes, too, but how'd you lose your spleen, Pinocchio? By the way, what does a spleen do? Or I always forget what a spleen does. Oh, boy. Not much. So why don't they just take out the spleen while they're at it when they take out your appendix? It's spleen, appendix, both kind of the same, aren't they? Yeah, what's the point of them? It, uh, your spleen actually is pretty important. It, uh, it it fights any invading germs in your blood. That's what I was just trying to tell you. Uh, yeah, it's, it uh, produces a lot of uh, white blood cells, controls the flow of that through your body, helps you fight germs and other you're gonna in, need that You're going to need that kidney, Pinocchio. You got no spleen. You're going to need the kidney. I'm sh- I don't know. Mm. feel like it, you're going to need all the help you can get there. Anyway, so if anybody's got a spare kidney uh, or, you know, somebody in a coma, uh, Nate Robinson could use a kidney. And as for the Google and stuff, th- there's a website called let me Google that dot com. And then you can if someone asks you a question they could have just Googled, you can go there, type it in, and then it'll actually produce a link that you can send them. And then it'll actually just be you typing what you typed into Google. So, and then it'll search it that way. That person knows next time you have a question, you should just Google. Like I just did for you. There you go. Google Seems that. like an extra Go- step that's not it, necessary. It's, it's there for mm. snarkiness. It's more All that right. than than actually efficiently giving people information. It's you're mm. showing them that they could have just Googled that themselves. So listen, when we come back from this break, if we do, uh, let's talk about. <laughs> This weird case of Shohei Otani and his interpreter and the gambling thing. Keon and I were in here off air before the show started, desperately trying to figure out the math of the situation. Because something is not adding up uh, with uh, what the Department of Justice is saying uh, versus, uh, well, uh, have your calculators ready or your abacus or whatever it is you use to count stuff. Because this math is just not working. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, the Fanatic. Nothing a white sweater along the near boards, carries into the corner. He has the lone tally here in the game. Bounds up the dasher, Weber couldn't hold. Sneaks out to center, race for the puck, back into the BU zone along the near boards. Nothing brewing, another cancel for BU. Now it's Kaplan through center, suckers it across the Denver line. Boston Puckberger unable to clear it out cleanly and then shoveled up and out of play and then a hard collision right in front of the BU bench and Buckberger goes down hard he's between Stevens and Kaplan there a couple of words for our Big Ten officiating crew with 8.45 to go here in the second one nothing BU we've only had one penalty in the game Denver had the lone power play but BU scored a shorthanded goal how this wasn't a penalty on BU for interference, I'll have no idea. I mean, that's just, and it's in front of the official too. And I like these two guys. They're good officials, but that's just. 1580 and 99.3, the Fanatic. Live and local. Ah, boy. Today, Blender here on 1580, the Fanatic. So, that was supposed to be a Masters golf update, but they're giving us some of the golf. I'm sorry, some of the uh, Frozen Four hockey stuff. I'm looking right at our satellite receiver information, and it's supposed to be recording uh, hockey updates, and we're not supposed to have a Frozen Four hockey game until 5.15 p.m. I'm looking right at it. It is set up correctly. And then I went over when we thought we heard that in a, a, a you know, a different break. And I was like, Ooh, okay. Uh, so I manually tried to switch it to where it needed to go and it still wouldn't work. So yeah, we did not just suddenly decide to play BYU uh, college hockey for no, no, it's Boston, reason. Boston university, I believe BU oh. or that uh, former coach of the uh, uh, bears BU. Hmm. So whatever the case, Matt Nagy. Yeah, that. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, just that's just the way the day show is going to be. Apparently, Matt Nagy was playing hockey. You, uh, you know what? B U. Oh, I see. I see what you're doing there. Yeah. Mm. So now I'm. Uh, I mean, you guys just talk amongst yourself while I go in the computer and do a couple <laughs> things real fast. <laughs> because this uh, is just going to get ugly. Well, Diamondbacks uh, clearly, uh, Keon, uh, are in need of a, a closer. And I think that uh, Kevin Ginkle came in uh, 
uh, uh, night before last and shut down Colorado. Do you think Kevin Ginkle could be the guy to be the uh, Ginkle the, is uh, Einhorn. Einhorn is Ginkle. Thought you were fixing something. I don't know. Why is your mic on? That's a good question. Mm. Kevin Ginkle, the uh, closer, and and until uh, Seawald comes back for these uh, Diamondbacks, what do you think? I, I mean, he looks he looks like the answer. I hope he is the answer because the closer by committee uh, d- d- doesn't work for the Diamondbacks. Um, mm. Even even the year before, before they they acquired Seawald, yeah, um, they tried closer by committee, and it was well, it was awful. <laughs> so you know, I think I think it does affect the pitching rotation, and the staff kind of likes the stability, or at least benefits from the stability of having just an everyday closer. Um, I don't think we need to see Genkel be as good uh, as, as Seawald, but but he does need to be at, at least you know decent, serviceable at it, and and I think he showed that he could do that. So the uh, Diamondbacks coming home uh, desperately needing to uh, to shore some things up. Currently, uh, I think they're in third place behind San Diego, uh, about a game behind San Diego right now. Uh, the Dodgers in the lead in the West, which is it's it's really early on. Uh, but Diamondbacks need to stand tall at home against a, a, a team in San, uh, St. Louis, a struggling uh, Cardinals team. You can't allow this team to come into your home uh, uh, arena and, and to uh, take uh, two of three from you. Can you? I, I don't think you can. And uh, I think so far the Diamondbacks have been playing like they know that. They they, they had a couple of uh, drops against uh, Colorado, but they but they won those series ultimately. And I, I think that, you know, that maybe maybe there's a drop against the Cardinals for a game, but uh, winning that series is going to be hugely important. Good teams beat the bad teams. That's what they do. And I think that the Diamondbacks have bigger aspirations than simply being just one of the good teams. I think they want to be one of the great teams uh, in baseball this year. I love Six, four- that uh, some of the uh, super fans of the fourth dimension think that we actually flipped the switch and got fired. <laughs> and like, <laughs> F these guys. Hockey time. Click. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how that would work. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, you, you never well, okay. know. Actually, I just, I just think that you're, you're. Yeah, it it's, could happen. That's a dubious oh, yeah. thing. As, you underestimate to, me. But firing oh, somebody yeah. on the air is it? Well, oh, I've done it. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've done it. Oh, we have. I've walked in a room yeah. and been like, "Guess what's mm-hmm. not happening to, after this break?" <laughs> you get. Wow. Get yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We dude. will not be back from this. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like you, you got to know the person in front of that mic. Uh, <laughs> you know they're not going to say things that'll <laughs> ruin stuff. You know, just, just uh... Randy's chuckle says, "No worries, we just figured Radio Ron pulled the plug." Yeah, just a whole operation. That's always a strong possibility. <laughs> every, every day we wonder. And Pinocchio says, <laughs> "Oh dang, I was laughing so hard when it went to the hockey game. I thought Radio Ron came up and pulled the plug on the show and sent you all home for the day." Mm. for the day <laughs> you you mean for, 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 for the rest of whatever the careers uh we have look like that's <laughs> day <laughs> we had careers we wouldn't be here yeah, that's good 888-368-1580 so let's uh are you done talking about the diamondbacks there i wasn't really paying attention. i was just going to say uh, diamondbacks open uh, tomorrow night 6 40 against the uh, st louis cardinals uh before the cubs come to town for three and then the diamondbacks go on the road uh, against the Giants to uh, uh, head us into the uh, the back end of uh, April. Yeah. We're going to find out, I think, with the Cardinals where these Diamondbacks really are. And the Rockies, they're, we've got their number. You know what I'm saying? So they're, they're, they're the easy team. And uh, well, the Cardinals are on par, at least record-wise, with where the Diamondbacks are. So I think we'll, we'll start to see what we're doing with, with the Cardinals here. Hmm. That's what All I right. think. All right. Well, what do I know? Mm, a lot. What? No, I'm actually asking, what do I know? A mm. couple of weird baseball scores today. Uh, we got a 16-4 Mets over Braves. Wow. wow. And a 13-3 to Royals over Astros. I'm just just throwing me off. I'm like, they'll, they'll, mm. a partial from overseas, 9-6. to <laughs> Just a couple of double-digit baseball games. Very, very normal. So let's uh, get to the Shohei Otani math because we're yeah. really confused about this. All right. So she- Shohei Otani, he don't speak the English, you know, really hardly at all. And uh, so he's got an interpreter because so then they walk around and uh, 
he, he just he just w- explains things to both people and that's yes. how an interpreter works one person says something in the the japanese and the other person says something in english the guy in the middle just kind of goes and it's really one of those things where i i don't know if i always trust the interpreter because you could be mm-hmm. he's happy wait he said a lot more yeah, words yes. than that yeah, that, yeah. that happens all the time especially with baseball interpreters they're they're the they're the wor- they'll paraphrase everything for you and it's just like wait, why show hey in the third inning it looked like you were kind of in trouble I and mean, where did you dig deep what's your inspiration when these sorts of things happen and he turns to show hey see one the guy yeah you didn't say everything i said either i there's no way <laughs> that's all i just said i don't know japanese on that level you bore me but i know enough japanese to know the three words does not condense a 16 word sentence yeah. it doesn't it doesn't exist but it happens all the time <laughs> then you're an interpreter and then after a while you start saying oh, i've got some power here i can hear what one person says but say something different uh yeah. so if somebody comes in the room oh my gosh there's a lot of money missing out of the account what did he say uh he, oh he said that uh Oh, he just saw the fattest dog walking down the street. Oh, it was hilarious. And then Shohei goes, ha, 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 ha. And he's like, the guy's like, wow, he doesn't care about his money. He just, so, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the interpreter uh, did a lot of damage and the Department of Justice got involved because there's a lot of people who are saying that he's just a fall guy for Shohei Otani and that Shohei Otani is the real gambler. And uh, so uh, they come sweeping in and they're like, uh, no, no, this is the interpreter who's gambled uh, all that money away. And uh, here's here's uh, here's what the feds say. Now, the math. Now, first thing we've heard is that there is like a 16 million dollars that the interpreter has stolen from Shohei Otani. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is much worse. So here is the money. Here is the level. Here's what they are saying. And it is substantial. So uh, he says that uh, the interpreter Average 25 bets a day, ranging from $10 to $160,000 per bet. And that happened between December of uh, 2021 and this January. And 19,000 bets that he did. 19,000. Wow. You look, okay. you look at the spreadsheet, okay? And on that spreadsheet, they got the numbers. Now, I printed these up. Average bet made twelve thousand eight hundred dollars winning bets 142 million losing bets 182 million now the difference between the losing and the winning bets 40 million dollars in the red so if he Mm -hmm. lost the 40 million dollars how is he only 16 under does he do interpretations for more people? Because they're saying he stole 16 million from Shohei. Mm-hmm. Where do you get the other 24 million? That's a, that that's a great question. Unless he's just good enough that he won it before he lost it, which I struggle to believe. Um, just looking at how often and he, he was betting. Uh, or does he still owe somebody 24 million? Also possible. There's a lot of information here that, that, that the math does not make sense. But the DOJ says, oh, well, here's one thing. Uh, Ipe Mizuhura, Hara, however you say his name, never bet on baseball. I don't believe you. So here's something you guys need to know. Department of Justice can be bribed like crazy. And Major League Baseball says, hey, Department of Justice. Hey, guy, how about you help us out here and Let's make sure his show. Hey, looks good. Okay. We'll do everything again. And oh, how would you like to be a, an executive is somewhere high up in the major league baseball for helping us make that happen? Guess what? That happens uh, with the department of justice employees all the time. Mm-hmm. It's the best way to Suddenly, make cases go away because yeah. you know what? You work for the DOJ. If you have a sense of purpose, okay, maybe you're the one person that can't be bought. But a lot of people are like, that's a better job than the job I have now. They have shown up on the boards of Nestle, uh, of GE, and all these other corrupt companies. It's happened before. Why can't it happen with the Major League Baseball? 
See what I'm saying? There, there, there's no reason. I don't trust the Department of Justice. Um, that that's why I'm I'm always more interested in the IRS because the IRS is motivated by by different they things. They do not care. <laughs> the IRS is not interested in making you look good. They want their damn money. That's mm-hmm. what they want. And mm-hmm. so I'm more interested in the IRS part of this. But yeah, um, it's uh, it, it's it's a little hard to to wrap your head around when you start to think about the, the 24 million dollars that are just not accounted for, and at least at least the parts of the reports that they've put out, it doesn't appear to be accounted for in anything. Uh, missing, gone, not acquired in the first place. That they're not saying. Well, I've got a twenty-four million dollar question. Haruto says, "Hello, Mr. O'Brien, Mr. White, Mr. Rose. As a Japanese person and a big fan of Shohei Otani, I can confirm that the interpreter doesn't actually fully translate from English to Japanese, or vice versa. Most often, the interpreter doesn't pay attention and says something simple, such as he's very happy. Also, is there any possibility for me to be an interpreter for Mr. Otani? From his bank account, he only withdraws one million. Just kidding." Yeah, uh, I think you should put in for that. I think there's an opening, or I think they probably already hired somebody. But um, yeah, it, we can tell when there's only a two word response to a five sentence question. Eh. Walter Mellon says, Keon just puckered up from that. You can always be fired thing. Yeah, yeah. With, with that being said, super glad he made it this far. Keon's a good guy. You, you, I, I think I've mentioned it on the show before. I work for a guy that fired me six times. I am very well aware that I could be fired. <laughs> and no one, no one is, in fact, more aware than me. Bruno Baller says, believe it or not, ASU has a pretty good hockey program. Maybe they'll make the Frozen Four one year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching some uh, ASU hockey. Uh, just another face in the crowd says the interpreters, uh, they're probably told the, the one they translate for can't stand those post-game pressers or any pressers. So maybe they don't translate to him because he's just like just uh, tell them whatever they want to hear possibly brunswick guy he says jeffrey i don't trust the department of justice especially after they confiscated all my maple syrup i was trafficking across the border <laughs> from canada mm. i think this is the funniest thing is there is there is like a a maple uh syrup mafia and there's there's some crime stories that you would not believe that have to do with ma- uh, vast reserves of maple syrup. I sat there watching this documentary on this, and I just was just laughing. My, I just it was it's one of the the, the the politest and tidiest crimes you've ever ever heard about. <laughs> <laughs> just I, there, you, there's crime in everything. Is, is, is it on Netflix? I don't know. I don't I, remember. I, I got to watch this. I got to I got to see this. But no, that that's a real thing. If, like, you, if you Google maple syrup documentary, I think you're going to find it pretty quick. How many could there be? Dirty money. The maple syrup price. Maybe sticky money. Yeah, it should have been sticky yeah. money. Well, Not sticky dirty. fingers. Yeah. Sticky fingers is what they should have called. That's what I'm talking about. Maple syrup. Yeah. Well, we got an hour and 15 minutes before we uh, play the hockey game that we meant to air that is going to start at 515. Not the one playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this technical difficulty was absolutely the fault of Westwood One. Mm. But OK, whatever. All right. We'll be back with hour two right after this. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic. At Progressive, we know money can't buy happiness, but money did buy your boat, where you find peace fishing, unlike at home with three teenage daughters. Because fish never argue about who stole whose crop top or get mad the other fish used up all the hot water. No, they just swim around, never embarrassed to be seen with you in public. So save money by bundling your boat or RV insurance with Home or Auto from Progressive. And buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every home run, every hit, every inning, every play from the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a walk-off grand slam or a base hit to center field. 
Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only must be physically located in Arizona. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. Need a boost in capital or a flexible line of credit for your growing business? Hi, I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital. I can help you get the money you need fast. The process is a breeze with a simple application and same day approvals. No more waiting, no more hassle. Just a straightforward path to securing the funds you need faster and easier than asking your banker. So call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. That's 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. Let's clear out winter and clean up the lawn. The spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot. Right now, get the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower for just $89 and make your lawn work easier with a powerful 90 miles an hour of clearing power. Plus, you can buy it online and pick it up in store, getting you outside sooner. Get your yard spring ready with the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower, now just $89 during spring Black Friday at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. See store at homedepot.com slash delivery for details. Everybody's got a podcast these days. Comedy, politics, true crime, you name it. But how many actually teach you anything useful? Harman Solar has an entertaining podcast that is vital if you've been thinking about looking into solar, but you don't know where to start. Ralph and Ben explore the intricacies of utilities, equipment, processes, and more. Their primary objective is to educate and empower you to make informed decisions on your solar journey. So increase your knowledge, not your bills. Go check it out right now. It's the Harman Solar Podcast at harmonsolar.com. You're expanding your business and need to add to your fleet. Maybe you need another semi-truck or trailer. Don't have the cash? I can help. I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital, and we offer no money down financing on new and used trucks and trailers. Whether you're an owner operator or a fleet manager, I'll get the vehicles you need with a simple application and same day approval. It's faster and easier than asking your banker. Call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. Live from the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale. This is KQFN 10 Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM. And K240U Fountain Hills at 95.9 FM. All right, people, settle down. Because it's time. Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's 4 o'clock here on the Daily Blender. I'm your good friend, your radio pal, Jeffrey O'Brien, alongside Brandy White. Got Keon Rose in the control room, and you guys are on the Fanatic text line, 888-368-1580, as we broadcast live in the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale. So the Masters Golf Tournament is going. DeChambeau is seven under par for the lead, and Schaeffler is right behind him, six under par. Then further back in the field, you got Willett and Hama at, uh, and along with Hugerd, uh, with four under pard. Hugerd is, uh, I believe he's uh, Swedish. I'm not sure. But uh, whatever the case, we'll keep you updated. Uh, you can hear uh, Masters updates uh, a couple times an hour uh, all the way through Sunday, except for right now because we're having a technical issue, which we're working on, which, by the way, is fun to do when you're trying to do a radio show. 888-368-1580. So, uh, all right, uh, we, we were talking about Shohei Otani's interpreter and how the math doesn't make sense. Shohei Otani's interpreter was said to have stolen $16 million from Shohei Otani. And then we find out he has lost $40 million gambling. So, okay, if he, if he lost $16 million, of Shohei Otani's money, where did he get the other uh, twenty-four million mm. to lose? Wouldn't he have? Uh, wouldn't that be his winnings? No, he he's lost more than he's won. Remember uh, on the uh, the math sheet that we have, he lost a hundred and forty-two million dollars. I'm sorry, one hundred and eighty-two million. Mm. Can you imagine? I actually can't. The staggering <laughs> number of I went ahead. And I placed $142 million in winning bets, but I lost $182 million. I, I, can, I can't imagine that. That is a staggering amount of money hmm. to not just have, but then lose. So uh, even if uh, you were doing that with $1 million, you start with $1 million. Well, you've still lost $40 million at the end, which means 
you lost that million dollars 40 times. You have lost 40 million. Forget about how much you've won. Focus on how much you've lost. $40 million. You have lost $40 million. That's got to come from somewhere. The pluses, well, that comes from the sports books. The minuses. Now, he was he was going through a, a bookmaker of his own. So, like, that like that person, right. does that person let you have leeway? And then, you know, you're, you're, you're starting to bet money you don't have. That'd be unwise on their part. Now, but if they've trusted you to make sure you've got the money before and you've had it before. Or he's slow paying. I'm like, here's a million. I'll give you another well, million later. I'll yeah, give you another there, million later. There have been reports that uh, yeah. that the the in person, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the interpreter mm -hmm. impersonated Shohei Otani, mm -hmm. which I don't believe that you would have to believe that at that point, if he's impersonating Shohei, then uh, he's using Shohei's good name and Shohei's uh, credit credits specifically and and the the bookmaker hey, he I'm, was I'm good for it I'm going to mm. I'll, I'll pay you nice. I I have this uh, contract and I'm going to make this much money so the I, interpreter I, I gets the, 16 million direct from Otani and then gambles on his name I just I just have a hard mm. time I just have I, a hard time believing that uh, Shohei Otani <laughs> knew absolutely you know nothing what, though? about this money being Sting missing. got ripped off for nine million dollars from somebody uh, people who yeah. have lots of money and then have to trust other people to use it he has to trust a guy to talk english for him so but you, you've i'm got sure other... he puts his trust in some other things like, I just but don't, you have, don't you have other people i'm maybe he i'm does sure i'm sure around he you would but mm. i watched that that broke documentary that the espen did a while ago and like that's the story with a lot of these guys. They trusted somebody else with their money, mm -hmm. and they just didn't check up on it. And then when they went back and said, hey. Well, then shame on them. You know, like in the case of Bernie Kozar, which feels extra sad to me because it was his dad. He wasn't yeah. looking at the money. He trusted well, his I dad mean, to handle the money. Well, then, then when he went I, back and his dad just mismanaged all of it. So, like, shame I, on shame on Otani for not knowing how much money he has and for not taking care of his money. Well, I mean, I can see both sides. I can see the one side where it's like, hey, you got to keep on uh, top of your stuff. May keep an eye on it. Check in every now and then. Make sure the people you have trusted can continue to be trusted. Uh, but on the other hand, if that's a guy's dad or if that's a guy's somebody who's well, been I mean, in I, your I, life I, and somebody I, you trust, I, you're like, I don't want to it, know. I mean, if it's your dad, sure, I would I would understand that. But. Come on. I'm, I'm just saying if you're if you're naive and trusting uh, that I don't think that that means that, you know, you deserve to be ripped off. That's going to be the end result, obviously. But that doesn't mean that that's what you deserve in life. Trust nobody. Let me tell you something, especially with that much money. But like people do. It happens. So when I was a kid, my dad, uh, whenever he would work for somebody else, we had lots of money. Uh, he was good at his job. But he was bad at business. So then when he would go into business for himself, we were dirt poor. And so my dad, through trying to run business, uh, uh, he uh, got into debt and then uh, he had bad credit. And then he had to go work for someone else and then everything was fine. But he still had bad credit. And uh, just to kind of let you know uh, how you don't trust anybody. I remember one day coming home, getting the mail, and there was a Playboy magazine in there that was addressed to my four-year-old sister's name. He basically used her name to get a subscription because so, his credit was so bad that he couldn't get it for himself. Like, wow. If you can't get if your credit is so bad, they won't sell you magazines. Dirt That's, bag. That is. Uh, ooh. So the point is, don't trust anyone. And uh, even if you do trust them, check in every now and then, show hey. Take a look at stuff. Now, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but a lot of people are looking at the like, you say, oh, there's no way he didn't know. It was probably Shohei doing the gambling, and this guy's just taking the fall for it. Person will take a fall to a point. This guy is going to take a fall to a point, but he's not going to take a fall to pound you in the rear end prison if, uh, you know, this thing goes sideways. So that it, guy is going to jail for 30 years. He will this roll over on Shohei wow. so fast if it's, Shohei has been the gambler so I, the whole I, time. I, I, bet, I bet he does not go to jail. I bet he doesn't. That would be interesting. I, I doubt that. I, that I don't believe. I think there I has bet, somebody's got to take the rap for this. I bet he does not go to jail.
Who called the police? Who called the police on Shohei Otani's interpreter? Was it Shohei? I actually don't know. So who's who's uh, dialing up? Boop, 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 boop. Oh, crap. I need an interpreter. You know, who's who's complaining? If Shohei was the gambler, he wouldn't be calling the police on this. So then somebody found out. You know what I'm saying? There's more stuff. I, yeah. Here. Th- th- I mean, this guy's uh, reputation will probably get ruined, but I, I bet he, he doesn't serve a day in jail. The, I, I doubt that highly. He is 40 years old. Um, he doesn't have the, any of the clout. He doesn't. Ha- I mean, the fact the fact of the matter is this story is out here now. So even if Major League Baseball wants to bury something, somebody's got to take the rap. That's just like there's no well, you can't sell there's, this. There's no rap unless Shohei Otani calls the police. Yeah, right. Because that's his money that's been stolen. Yeah, right. So he's the guy who has to say, hey, I've been robbed. And then you can choose to press charges or not. So the fact that this guy is not. Uh, it, 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 and, and by if, the if way, Shohei's gambling. Well, that's a pickle. If the show Hayes not gambling, that's a pickle. Either way, he's in a pickle. It, he he was working as a uh, an interpreter for another Japanese player, pitcher named Hideki Okajima with the Boston Red Sox from 2000 to 2011. Um, and then at some point in March of, of this year, the Red Sox said he was never actually an employee of ours. Well, he he probably just, worked directly for the guy. Yeah. Um, so he, they're, they're already trying to distance themselves from him and, and all of this, Like he's the fall guy. He's the fall guy. There, there's no Wait, getting around. Is this he the fall him. guy or is he the bad guy? Well, he One, well the it, dep- guy. it depends on, on what version of the story is actually he, true. He, if I Shohei, want the truth, if Shohei is the better, he's the fall guy. Mm-hmm. If Shohei isn't, and it actually is him. Well, then he's the bad guy. He just stole money and gambled either way. It. I bet he doesn't serve it a day in jail. I, I can't, I just don't see how that would happen. <laughs> so let me just ask, how much money to spend uh, some time in jail uh, to be the fall guy for somebody else? How, how many years how, would you how spend much, for how, how much money? He's, he's 39 years old and he's looking at 30 years if everything sticks. That's There's no amount of money that's going to get you the rest of your life back. Dude's going to be 70 when he gets out of jail. Beer Bob says, Otani should have listened to Marshawn Lynch. Need they to take, take care of your chickens. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And uh, just another face in the crowd says started as a DOJ investigation into illegal gambling. DOJ is bringing the charges. Okay. So okay. they, they, so they found just, these things out. They, by, just, they were just investigating they, right. gambling in general. And it was from the outside it. in, not from the inside out. Got it. Also got a, a text here from the interpreter that uh, the interpreter texted you. He, no, he didn't text me. He texted oh. one of the bookmakers. Uh, and this is just from the, the, the document. Uh, the one of the bookmakers says, have you seen the reports? Uh, I think they're BS. Obviously, you didn't steal from him. I understand it's a cover job. And then Mizuhara responded, well, technically, I did steal from him. And it's all over for me. Sounds uh... so if you believe that those texts are real. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like he's the guy. Yeah. Um, I don't I, w- he, I wouldn't trust anything. And his primary form of texting or reaching out to the book bookmakers was texting mm-hmm. so if you believe that he impersonated Shohei that could make sense because they never actually met in person really they they just texted so what we need to know is did he impersonate Shohei uh Randy's chuckle says rough life trading Otani's wallet for a prison wallet well it's gonna <laughs> be a tough wife uh life Freudian slip mm. for the prison wife anyway mm. so uh yeah uh, I guess we'll just have to Hang in there and see what comes next. Haruto says, Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Rose must not uh, underestimate the Japanese man's determination to keep secrets and entrap Otani. If Shohei pays him enough money, the interpreter will keep quiet. So you're I, saying, Haruto, that you think Otani is gambling and that's that this whole thing is just a cover up. I mean, look, it's possible. I'm not I, I still don't think you can rule it out. But I, I also think, look, you're, you can ask somebody to stand up for for a long prison sentence stand tall in prison as as they say but what happens when five years turns into 10 and they're looking at 20 more years do they do they keep that then okay what if it turns into 15 and they're still looking at 15 right. years after that like at some point and you don't know exactly how much it's going to be until sentencing you're going to roll the dice on that one 
not 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 ideal. I've 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 seen uh you know uh, enough of stuff out there, you know the the documentaries and the shows and all that about literal murderers who've been able to plea bargain down murder sentences because they've turned on somebody that they thought that they were gonna you know take the rap and then they realized you know what I don't actually want to do that. This isn't mm. enough money. I want out of here. So tough to know what to believe so, until you have all the evidence, but I don't even trust all the evidence because the DOJ is involved and uh, Major League Baseball is involved. And as Haruto says, people with a lot to lose are involved. So I guess we'll just see what happens. We'll just see what happens. I mean, we don't have to believe it. Whatever they tell us it is and whatever they decide it is, that's what it will be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, smells funky. It does smell funky. Quiet Cannon says the interpreter takes the rap whether he's guilty or not of embezzling money from Otani. In return, Otani doesn't press charges on the interpreter. That way, both of them are off the hook. Well, but the DOJ's takes... got different charges yeah. than what uh, Otani would press against him. Yeah, they, they were investigating something else, and they well, they were investigating well, they gambling, were, but they weren't they investigating were, him. As, well, specifically, they weren't investigating Shohei's interpreter. They were right. investigating this bookmaker. Right, but that means that uh, either Shohei or the interpreter were involved in illegal gambling. But there's going to be a plea deal. I guarantee you that th this guy will not see a day in jail. I guarantee and The only you. way that that happens is if Shohei's involved and he turns on. Yeah. I, and they're that's not going to give him. They're say. not. OK. I mean, you got a wonderful <laughs> turn. Oh, on OK. I, I, I just misunderstood what you were saying there. And, I thought no, that's okay. what I'm trying to say. So I, the next I question you're going to have is my bad. Randy. Here comes yeah. the interpreter saying, you know what? I thought about it. I'm not taking the fall for him. Otani was the one gambling. I just took uh, I took the I heat mean, for it. But here's I, the thing. I, do you still believe the interpreter? I don't know. Uh, Who at do this you believe? Point, he, I just he would I just feel would like this interpreter is not going to go to jail. He would need to make that claim with receipts. Like mm -hmm. you, you, you don't just get to accuse Shohei and then now you're off the hook. It's like, oh, no, I definitely this is these are texts that me and Shohei had. This is the yeah. burner phone. Something. Quiet Cannon says, I agree with Randy. No one is going to jail. Well, let me just mm -hmm. say, I don't agree with that. But if yeah. no one goes to jail, then Sho Shohei Otani was guilty all along. It was all about his gambling and everybody got together to cover it up uh, to for Major League Baseball. If the interpreter to goes to jail. The interpreter, it's probably, probably the interpreter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's how we're gonna see. That's how we're gonna see. Uh, Pierre says, oh, "Hello, guys. I've been watching the Sopranos a lot uh, lately, and there's oh. a, a lot of guys <laughs> who stayed uh, silent and got in long prison sentences. Yeah, well, that's different. Mafia, st you stay quiet even if it's twenty years because well, they they're, they're gonna kill you. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know." Uh, the, the Sopranos, The Wire. There's a one lesson you should learn from both of those shows, which is they got guys in jail too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not safe anywhere. You, you start talking in prison, you'll die in prison. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hefty Lefty says, Sounds like a borrows pizza bet between Randy and Keon. Well, what would the that bet be? Joey's <laughs> interpreter going to jail. No, that seems a little, little ghoulish. I don't know if I can make that bet. Well, Randy's <laughs> saying, oh, hold on, hold on. Randy is saying nobody is going to jail. So he's saying uh, not uh, you know, nobody uh, is going to jail. Neither Shohei or the interpreter. Right, Randy? That's the yes. right. You're uh, okay. It's exactly right. Yeah. You think the interpreter is going to jail? Yeah. Or Shohei's, or no matter what, not going to jail. He's got too much yeah, money. To yeah, go he's, to jail. he's got enough money. He could get out of it. Okay. <laughs> but, but, you want to take this bet? Nobody's going to jail, says Randy. He's either right or he's wrong. I just betting on a guy going to prison just feels <laughs> weird to me. I can't actually do it. I, I, I don't want to do that. It just feels wrong. <laughs> I have no problem doing it. <laughs> I know you don't. I'm talking just me personally. I I don't. <laughs> I, I I do. I, I have a problem with. It. I can't do it. I I I'm just not going to take that bet, Randy, <laughs> because it's a fifty fifty split. I mean, it's either the interpreter goes to jail or nobody goes to jail. You know, and yeah. uh, well, I mean, if, if, if you we knew at... for sure the interpreter was the one, tell you what, I'll reconsider this bet if you find out. Okay. The interpreter, they've got some proof. It really is him. Are you still going to stand by I, that? I, bet? I don't know how you can take text messages and prove it was the interpreter. I, I don't know how you can do that. And I'm still not convinced well, they, because Shohei was not involved in some manner. Well, it, it, they, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to use they use the same technology that they find, used to find okay. like missing people where you're triangulating it. Like if you can prove that this is his phone and he's been yeah. driving back and oh, forth yeah. with it using the GPS right, and all that right, stuff. Right. 
Yeah. Then and then he's been texting. And when he was here, he texted this. And when he was here, he texted this. Sure. If you've got that whole timeline, okay. then you, I think you can. The only way to prove Shohei Otani was behind all this uh, and doing stuff and somebody else's covering is if you've got the text messages from Shohei to the interpreter saying, hey, don't forget to bet this or that. Or a audio or video recording of Shohei Otani talking about the betting that this guy is doing for him. Uh, uh, you know, or some sort of admission that's been caught or recorded. You got, or some sort of proof, uh, like uh, Keon said, that clearly comes from Shohei's phone or it comes from Shohei's mouth. Uh, outside of that, yeah, it's uh, it's almost impossible to prove somebody being behind it. So you you got to go after the interpreter. Yeah. Um. Though, what an interesting distraction. So glad the Dodgers picked him up. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it'll it'll help them focus on the season that they're about to have and, and the world series they want to try to win so i'll tell you what we we've been talking about the shohei otani thing i've got some more corruption for you uh it's not just here it's also in spain it's also in italy and i got a couple of sports stories about just that sort of thing when we come back it's the daily blender here on 1580 the fanatic Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Let's clear out winter and clean up the lawn. The spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot. Right now, get the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower for just $89 and make your lawn work easier with a powerful 90 miles an hour of clearing power. Plus, you can buy it online and pick it up in store, getting you outside sooner. Get your yard spring ready with the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower, now just $89 during spring Black Friday at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. See store homedepot.com slash delivery for details. Hi, I'm Ralph Romano. And I'm Neil Lynch. And we're the Weekend Warriors. So, Ralph, what are the Weekend Warriors all about? Well, we talk about sports. National sports? Of course. Regional sports? Sure. Arizona sports? Yeah. And we also interview local athletes, coaches, and sports-related business owners to share their amazing stories. But what if they don't have an amazing story? Then we talk about something else. You know what, Neil? You're fired. Again? Well, listen in for great sports talk, amazing interviews, and to see if I have a job next week. You won't. It's the Weekend Warriors every Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on 1580 The Fanatic. It's a daily blender here on 1580, the fanatic. So now Tiger Woods is one under par, which is good for 18th place. Whatever that means. I, I mean, I know what it I, means, but I, I need to double check. But I think he's still early in his round. Oh, OK. Or earlier than most of the people that we're seeing at the top anyway. Oh, man, look at that. Fl- it's windy. It is windy at Augusta right now. And, uh, of course, that wind uh, helped Tiger Woods out um, a little bit, a little bit on that. Well, actually, no, it didn't. No, it was going the other way. Well, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, we'll keep you up to date on what's happening with the uh, with the Masters uh, as we go. 888-368-1580. Quiet Cannon says, Japanese are loyal to each other. That's their nature. I'm on the same bus with Randy, though. No jail time. Yeah, he says, Otani and his interpreter will work it out. Well, well, it's, it's not again, about the, him. The, the Otani's not bringing the charges. The DOJ is bringing the charges. It doesn't matter what Shohei wants. I'm pretty sure Shohei doesn't want the guy in jail either way. But, uh, you know, I it's not his call. It's not his call. Bruno Baller says, hey, if that promo I just heard is any indication, <laughs> maybe Ralph does have crabs. Oh, yeah, he feels that he fires that Neil guy like all the time. Uh, so let's talk about some other corruptions. So we were talking about the, the gambling scandal with Shohei Otani's interpreter or Shohei Otani. Still not sure. Uh, but uh, this is just astounding. Um, you know, I've, I've said before, wrestling is fake. I'm talking about yes. professional wrestling yes. is fake. Yes. The stuff you see on TV where they're uh, throwing tables and chairs at each other and jumping yes. off of things and 
uh, doing cartwheels and uh, uh, murdering people on the cement. In well, real life, everything yes. they do would kill a guy. Yes. So, of course, it's fake. But uh, there is wrestling that's real. and it, The wrestling you see in high school, the wrestling you see in college, the wrestling you see in the Olympics, that is real. And uh, this just uh, came to light. Two-time world champion and Olympic bronze medalist Frank Chimizzo, uh, he said, uh, well, you know, he had to turn down a bribe of $300,000 to deliberately lose a match last week in the European Wrestling Olympic Qualification Tournament in Azerbaijan. So somebody came up to him and said, here, I'll give you $300, throw this match. And he, $300,000. Yeah, $300,000. And he said, uh, no. Uh, he said, uh, yeah, he says, I, he's like, he's like, wow, uh, that, that's crazy. And he said, uh, he refused. He says, because I don't only represent myself, but also Italy. And it's not easy to break my integrity. So good for him. And he went out there and he wrestled and well, he lost anyway. So yeah. I guess oh, yeah. Yeah. it's probably good. He didn't take the money. <laughs> No, it's probably then, bad he didn't take the money. Well, no, well, because if you take the money and then lose, well, now you're in trouble. But if you don't take the money and lose, now well, you now you we can trust you. Well, you're man of integrity. I don't, right, I don't think he lost on purpose, but he still has a chance to qualify for the Paris Games uh, in next month's World Qualification. So he's not out completely yet. But uh, I'm sure that was a distraction. Yeah, I mean, how could it not be? Because you, because if someone offers you three hundred grand, you think about it. The answer, if you're a good person, is no. But it, there's a reason why it's called temptation. It, 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 mm. it, you know, it 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 takes a a lot to try and say no to that. And and I'm glad he did because, you know, that's a that's a sport that I think could do without any extra scandal. Um, you know, not not that a lot of people are are too are tuned into it anyway. When you add the the level of scandal on top of the sport, then. You know, people are going to say, why should I watch that? You got people throwing matches. So for him, the sport, his country, his name, all of that, it was the right call. So, uh, you know, good for Frank Chimizzo. So, but yeah, there's corruption in that. Uh, you know, Olympic wrestling, can you believe it? Bruno Baller says, I think the real wrestling is traditionally referred to as Greco Roman wrestling. I know, and I would have said that, but I think there's a lot of people who can't quite tell the difference between the fake wrestling and the real wrestling. Uh, so I, I I said it that way. Hefty Lefty says corruption in Olympic sports. Well, color me shocked. Mm. I know, right? Uh, Quiet Cannon says Augusta gets tougher. Yeah, it's uh, that wind is going pretty good. He says, yeah, it gets tougher when the wind blows because it swirls. Uh, because of the terrain the scores are going to be higher though when the wind blows. Well, yeah, if you, you figure out the wind and you can figure out the way uh, you know, the greens are rolling, sure, you could putt from a good distance, but you still got to know what the hell you're doing. I don't know if it makes it uh, it makes and, it easier to distance, but I don't think it makes it easier. And your, your margins are thinner. Like if you make one mistake in terms of reading the wind, that ball's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it, the, the, air, the wind is taking it and putting it somewhere that's going to be horrifically inconvenient for you to try to get it. You'll have to make sure you can play it off of somebody's ankles because it's just going to go over there. Mm. Uh, so there's another bit of corruption for you. Uh, in, in the world of tennis, Spanish tennis player Aaron Cortez has been hit with a 15-year ban for fixing matches. I think that's just like his career, right? I mean, 15 years. He's 29 yeah. years old, so yeah, he's out forever. I mean, he, he, at best, he had five years left. <laughs> Slapped with a $75,000 fine. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, he actually admitted to a number of violations between 2016 and 2018, took money in exchange for contriving the outcome of events, uh, failing to report corruption, betting on tennis, and paying tournament officials for a wild card. Wow, that's a lot of corruption from one person. Mm. So 15-year ban, which might as well just be the end of him forever in, in that. And then you got, of course, in the NBA, Jonte Porter is facing a lifetime ban. Uh, little Adam Silver is not messing around. Uh, he got uh, in trouble for the cardinal sin of betting on NBA games. He could get the maximum punishment right there. And and I, Adam Silver wants this to be an example. 
basically. Like in the NFL, they didn't really make an example out of anybody. You know, Calvin Ridley got half a season. Um, you know, a couple other guys, half a season. Like the NFL is is trying to get that out of sight and out of mind. I don't think the NBA has that luxury because of their history with gambling issues and referees and, you know, Tim Donahue and all of that. That history makes it really hard for the NBA to look the other way. They, they got to make an example out of somebody. And Jonte isn't really anybody. So yep. they're going to tear him to pieces. Yeah, poor kid. Well, I mean, hey, you knew the rules. You you know, you're you're the yeah. one who did what she did there. So you, you are an adult. So Rashi Rice knows the rules. You know, you, you don't speed, you don't race, you don't run away from the scene of an accident. And now Rashi Rice, there's a warrant out for his arrest on eight different charges, six counts of uh collision involving bodily injury, one count oh, of collision boy. involving serious body injury to one of oh, count boy. of aggravated assault. And uh, all, all these charges are felonies. So the NFL is keeping an eye on this, but does not look good for Rashi Rice, all just because he was being a dumbass and racing a car. Didn't, I, I, am I wrong here? But uh, Keon, help me out. I, I think both cars involved in this wreck, the uh, Corvette and the Lamborghini, both uh, belonged to Rashi Rice. I, I, am I wrong here? I, I thought I read that somewhere. I haven't seen. I, that. I hadn't seen that. Both um, cars, but the it, other it, cars were not uh, owned by him. So well, no, bystanders I mean, the, that they the bystanders into. cars were, but uh, the both cars that were racing belonged to Rashi Rice, and I think Rashi was driving the uh, mm -hmm. the Lambo. No, they got uh, Theodore Knox uh, was the driver of the Corvette. Okay, yeah. Right. So yeah, so here's the the, the deal. Uh, Rashi Rice was actually renting the oh. Lamborghini. Oh, um, so that was somebody else's the car. Yeah, but the he Corvette, the, the Corvette was his. Okay, you're right, Randy. You're right. Uh, one way or the other, they are linked to him. Man alive. And they found marijuana found in both cards, uh, oh, the cars. And, uh, you know, don't do a that. playbook for the Chiefs was found in the car, too. Well, oh, at, least, at least he had the playbook. I mean, they're 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 guys. Not a playbook would be found. I'm sure the coach is like, <laughs> that makes me feel good. At least, <laughs> at least he was <laughs> studying the playbook. That's great. Mm. Thundar the Santa Barbarian says, I lived in Japan for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Why were you in Japan for 13 years, Thundar? I, I'm kind of curious about that. He says, and I can uh, I can get by in a conversation, but anytime I dealt with the bank or real estate agent, I would have been helpless. A university where I taught, oh, that's why, I uh, had someone to help me with those interactions. If they had tried to pull something on me, I'd have been screwed, but I don't know. The, the Major League Baseball might cover this up, but no one at the DOJ is going to cover up Protani. They want to take down the biggest target that they can possibly get. Well, well except for if Major League Baseball came over and says, hey, DOJ guy, maybe we can come to an agreement where you end up being a CEO of something. You know, like all the other DOJ guys that are corrupt. Yes. Gonna say I'm just going to say they... They're going to try to – Major League Baseball wants this thing to go away. They want it to go away soon, and they don't want any ramifications because it's Shohei Otani. And I, I, I can almost guarantee that even though this guy, uh, it, whether the guy's dirty or not, uh, the interpreter, uh, that he's not going to spend a day in jail because Major League Baseball wants this to go away. Now, the DOJ was already investigating the bookmaker. So if anybody goes down, it's going to be the bookmaker. Hmm. I don't know about that. I mean, I get what you're saying. That's a that's a big target of what they're trying to do. But they'll take some people down. If, it, if, if they'll take some some high value targets down with them, maybe. It, yeah, I, I, I doubt it. Though. I just I just find it hard to believe the interpreter doesn't spend a day in jail, but they take down the bookmaker. That mm -hmm. because who was making the bets? Whose bets were those? And there lies the hook. And I just mm -hmm. don't think you can sell that to anybody. There lies the hook. I don't think they have a way to, uh, without any shadow of doubt, to clear Shohei on this. You know, I keep turning on uh, my computer and I'll turn on, like, check out. And like, oh, look, there's another news story I wasn't expecting today. Like, oh, my God, O.J. Simpson died. O.J. Yeah. Simpson, 76. Yeah. Had no idea. Good riddance. And then later on, I turned on my computer just before the show to this headline. Tom Brady opened to a comeback if a contender uh, lost their quarterback late in the season. No. Shut up, Tom. 
No. No, it's a true story. He says, I'm not opposed to it. I don't know if they're going to let me if I become a uh, owner of an NFL team. They won't let you. Tom. Hey, Tommy, no. part owner. You don't have owner money. You have part owner money. He says, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm always going to be in good shape. Always going to be able to throw the ball. So come no. in for a little bit like MJ coming back. I don't know if they let me, no. but I wouldn't be opposed to it. No. Yeah, that didn't. How did that go for MJ again? He was the owner of a team and then he came back to play for that team. And- don't do it, Tom. Just how, stay away. How'd that, how'd that go? Again? Let your legend start to permeate the souls and minds of those uh, who, who are in the football game. Don't come back and sully that. Don't do it. Maybe he's kidding. Stay away, Tom. Because it sounds like a funny joke. It's just a huge mistake. Don't, don't do it, Tom. Go play golf. Go, go chase Giselle down. And, and and get her back in your life. Don't come back to football. I don't think he's trying to get her back. I don't think that's a thing. Well, I don't know that it is or not. I'm just saying, don't, don't, oh, geez, don't come back. Saw that headline. I was like, no, 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 no. no. Go start your broadcast career and uh, it, it grow into your golden year. It, uh, don't. Like, what do we got to deal with here? So now Tom don't Brady uh, is uh, wishy-washy on retirement. Oh, now no. we got to worry about whether or not he's going to be trying to Shill some state for their welfare money, like Brett Favre did. No, he won't do that. I come on. Come I don't on. know. His company did Brady. take some PPE loans during COVID, uh, and it's not like he needed the money. He took PPE money from a pile of money that could have gone to uh, businesses that didn't have a guy who owned it. TB12, uh, owned by Tom Brady. He's deep pockets. He didn't have to take that money. Uh, he he did, but other businesses maybe missed out on getting PPE money because of Tom Brady. So don't tell Look, me I, that Tom you, Brady, uh, you know, is this uh, paragon of uh, virtue. And goodness. I didn't say that. I just say don't don't do it. Don't sully your legend. Oh, he'll of, sully uh, uh, football. Hey, don't come back. Hey, stay away. Take you know what? Get involved in the PP money. Who cares? It's PPE money. It's not PP money. Right. That's what I said. Hmm. PP money. Huh? It's PPE. Go get that PP money and and don't worry about it, Tom. Sort of need the PPE money. That's what I said, PP money. That's Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, uh, yeah, Tom Brady's supposed to be uh, doing games. Uh, He's supposed to be doing play-by-play. So do your best uh, Troy Aikman impersonation. He's just talking crap. He ain't coming back. Uh, And by the way, uh, speaking of coming back, my wife was asking me the other day. She's like, so the the Manning brothers, uh, how long do you think they're going to keep doing it? And I was like, I'm, I don't know. Well, now I have the answer. They're going to be doing it through 2034. Oh, <laughs> oh no. they have uh, now got a long term deal with the Espen no. Peyton no. Manning and Omaha Productions through 2034. So that is 10 years of the Manning cast. Oh, no. Why, why is that a problem? Mm, it's not a problem. They, just, they, well, Randy's saying, oh, no, I'm I think just it curious. Might run its course in a couple of years, to be honest. So maybe they'll do other has. kinds of shows. It depends. If they, if they can has. try and take the entertainment side of that away and uh. just keep it more focused on football, I would watch every version of Look, Monday if Night he Football. Look, if he was one. breaking it down, I, that's one thing. But he, they've turned it into a, a damn uh, a variety show. That's what they've done. They're bringing on guests and stuff instead of him and, and, and uh, his mouth breathing brother uh, breaking down football plays. I, and they just and they it's a vari- it's a damn variety show. I tell you. Yeah, the better shows are when the guests are really into the game, too. Yeah. And then they just talk mostly about the football. Like when they when they bring in other players, like when they you know, when they brought in Josh Allen or they brought in Russell Wilson. Like, next up on the show is yeah. going to be Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy, break down this play for Jimmy Kimmel can't break down a damn play. Come on. He's not completely uh, dumb about sports, though. He, he used to do a sports show. <sighs> please, please. And I know you're listening to the show right now going, that's eh, not really. <laughs> ten years. <laughs> ten years. Come on. I mean, that's not a prerequisite for well, ten, sports knowledge. Ten years is a, is a nice contract and he's got the, because it's not just him it's it's the it's the omaha productions it's the all of the stuff that he's doing you know they've got that oh yeah they Peyton's get places and Eli's places like those and... shows yeah so um that they, they, they'll they'll figure out a lot of different things to do with peyton manning as well Keon, do you watch the do you watch the manning cast do you uh yeah yeah Dep- depends you, on the matchup I but i i, I so do you usually. like the manning cast 
I do. I mean, I, I, you know, like, like I said, I don't like some of the more entertainment side stuff when they you know, bring on an actor yeah. or actress. Like, I don't care what you think about football. You, Jeff I want to know what the you, guys who played in the league do. You watch it, Jeff? Yeah, I'm on the same page as Keon. I'll watch it, but then say if I get bored with it or they're, they're talking too much, uh, not about the game, I'll switch over to the game. What kind of muffins did you yeah. have this morning? Who cares? Who cares? I don't think they've ever asked that. I don't think. What, who, I mean, who cares? I don't think anybody like, talks kind of like a, that on the show. What kind of a step ladder do you use to? You know, to hey, get, you know what? Get, don't bring Randy the AC events. You know, you're not supposed to bring up step ladders because I never knew my real ladder. <sighs> sorry. I'm sorry. That's why you have to bring that up. I'm so sorry. We have to take a break. I'm going to have a seat. I need to mm. think. Uh, when we come back, we're talking about other things. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic. At Progressive, we know money can't buy happiness, but money did buy your boat where you find peace fishing, unlike at home with three teenage daughters. Because fish never argue about who stole whose crop top or get mad the other fish used up all the hot water. No, they just swim around, never embarrassed to be seen with you in public. So save money by bundling your boat or RV insurance with Homer Auto from Progressive and buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every home run, every hit, every inning, every play, from the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a walk-off grand slam or a base hit to center field, whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary. At Bet365. 21 plus only. Must be physically located in Arizona. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem or wants help, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342. Need a boost in capital or a flexible line of credit for your growing business? Hi, I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital. I can help you get the money you need fast. The process is a breeze with a simple application and same-day approvals. No more waiting, no more hassle. Just a straightforward path to securing the funds you need faster and easier than asking your banker. So call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. That's 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. Let's clear out winter and clean up the lawn. The Spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot. Right now, get the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower for just $89 and make your lawn work easier with a powerful 90 miles an hour of clearing power. Plus, you can buy it online and pick it up in store, getting you outside sooner. Get your yard spring ready with the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower, now just $89 during Spring Black Friday at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. See store at homedepot.com slash delivery for details. Everybody's got a podcast these days. Comedy, politics, true crime, you name it. But how many actually teach you anything useful? Harmon Solar has an entertaining podcast that is vital if you've been thinking about looking into solar, but you don't know where to start. Ralph and Ben explore the intricacies of utilities, equipment, processes, and more. Their primary objective is to educate and empower you to make informed decisions on your solar journey. So increase your knowledge, not your bills. Go check it out right now. It's the Harmon Solar Podcast at HarmonSolar.com. You're expanding your business and need to add to your fleet. Maybe you need another semi-truck or trailer. Don't have the cash? I can help. I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital, and we offer no money down financing on new and used trucks and trailers. Whether you're an owner operator or a fleet manager, I'll get the vehicles you need with a simple application and same day approval. It's faster and easier than asking your banker. Call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. I'm here to tell you about a technological shocker. Believe it or not, you can listen to us on your smart speaker. That's shocking. Wow. <laughs> what a world we live in. All you have to do is say listen to 1580 The Fanatic. Stay Blender here on 1580, the fanatic. So Tom Brady making $300 million to do some play-by-play. Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, or they're making a big old chunk of money to do stuff on the TV. Sure. Aaron Rodgers still out there trying to play uh, in the football, but uh, I'll tell you what, with that $75 million over two years he has, you know, I mean, he's guaranteed on a lot of that, right? When he got injured, he still got paid. I feel like he still got paid. Yeah, he did. Except for when they looked at it, you know, they always do the math. There's always accountants. They got to figure it out. Uh, you know, the NFL has a thing called performance-based pay. 
designed to give extra compensation to players who have low salaries but uh, overperformed and got a lot of playing time. Well, Aaron Rodgers, $75 million of that salary over two years, but because of his injury, you know, he, he played like for a few seconds. So he only took 0.33% of the snaps in 2023. 0.33, not even 1% of the snaps. He took two or three snaps. Uh, therefore, his performance-based pay for the season, $81.14. Wow. The lowest in the NFL. How about that? When you performance based pay. No, actually, most of that was not guaranteed. So whatever they paid him, he only got eighty one. Uh, uh, they only got eighty one dollars and fourteen cents worth. How much uh, did he make was guaranteed? Uh, seventeen mil. Yeah, so seventeen million dollars for eighty one dollars and fourteen cents worth of work. Man, he could have made sixty six. But instead, <laughs> he made 17 <laughs> wow. and gave them $81.14 worth of effort. So on the other hand, end of that, though, uh, Brock Purdy of the 49ers, the league's lowest paid starting quarterback, salary of $870,000. His performance base pay, he earned $739,765,000, which almost doubled his salary. So he got that plus the $870,000. Wow. So, still. So this. This comes from what, like TV rights and stuff? A million and a half for no, no, those Super are Bowl runner-up is uh, not great. Those are just the incentives written into your contract. So if you hit oh, those so incentives, this is, uh, then, yeah. The oh, team, the, so okay. the Niners are going to pay him. But uh, I hope they cut yeah. a check for eighty-one dollars and fourteen cents and mailed it to Aaron Rodgers' house. You know they're going to. <laughs> right? I would do it. Just I, I'd put it on a big check, like you won an award. Check. Yeah, <laughs> just a goofy looking. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, hoping you uh, earn the rest of that money this year, pal. Just Too hoping bad. you like Ed McMahon's not still around. He could deliver it with like balloons and stuff. I'd love that. So uh, the uh, the NFL, uh, they, the first thing they said was, we'll never do Christmas games in the middle of the week. Uh, this is only going to be for the weekend. And then, then they saw the ratings last year. Oh, uh, remember we said that? We lied. Uh, there will we, be we know. <laughs> Christmas games. in the, But for some reason, and I'm not hmm. sure what that reason is just yet, the NFL is going to not have a Christmas Eve game this year. Hmm. Hmm. Must not have been as good a ratings or something, because why? Why go backwards? The NFL doesn't usually do that. So now they're saying hmm. that, uh, yeah, no, uh, no game on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is on a Tuesday. I guess that Tuesday night football is just just a bridge too far. So it'd be like a is Monday. it a bridge too far other than Wednesday night football? Well, it would be like a Monday, Tuesday, a Wednesday, Christmas Day, Thursday night football, and then back to uh, Sunday night football, Sunday and Sunday night football. Hmm. That'd be a long week, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah, because hmm, you got Monday the 23rd, you got Tuesday the 24th. I would imagine that's why they're not doing it. No, I just don't. I just don't even care anymore. Hmm. I don't care what day they put the football on. If it's a good game, I'll watch it. If it's not, and I'm in the middle of what is today? Oh, it's Christmas Eve. All right, fine. We don't. Uh, we don't have to like watch the football. Monday, today. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, I think it would be too much. Probably. I don't probably think there's thinking. such a thing as too much football. Well, I don't care. I'm okay with it. They have to. They have to go with the uh, the uh, what do you call it? the bargaining agreement, right? I mean, they can't play. Too much. Oh, they don't care about the players. Oh, well then. You know they don't care about the players. Yeah, strap it on and let's go. Here we go. Get your strap on going and no, let's no, go. No, no, you strap them let's on. Let's get that strap, strap the on pads going. On. And uh, let's get just, out there and play some football, boys. Yeah, it's not just one thing. Go ahead, strap it on. No, just let's them, go. them on. Them, them pads, not just a pad. Right. That's what I'm Put saying. Plural. Them pads. What do you think I'm saying? I mean, I, it doesn't I, sound good. I, what you're I, saying. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know Buckle what you think on. you're saying. Let's strap it on there. You're not go. saying them. what you think you're saying, though. That's hmm. all of them. Yeah. Hmm. Thunder San Barbarian says, what if a guest asks, what kind of a step ladder does Kyler Murray use to see over oh, his no. own line? That's no, no. sports related, sort of. Didn't you hear Jeffrey before the break? I heard him. I got to hurt deeply. Yeah. Why do you want to bring it up again about the step ladder? I'm sure you guys all knew your ladders, uh, your real ladders. There's a bug in here. <laughs> Get away from the microphone. That's the thing. They always go directly to the microphone. It's always just one little gnat. Mm -hmm. He's got the whole room to be in. He goes to the mic. 
no, for mm. 10 years i've been coming here and uh there, there's these being these little gnats well, that's where that good stuff every, is every, every, every spring no. is there, <laughs> i've never even won is there like a fruit tree out there or something i don't know where are a these bugs tree? coming from mm. it's, and it's always just spring like they're not here in summer they're not here in hmm. do we have what, any whatever would be fall time inside the radio range winter do we have any, like live plants no how about some uh, fruit in the uh, in the break room? No, no, no. no. Mm. I don't know. Vegetable. Don't know. Those things don't exist here. Are you kidding mm. me? Yeah. When's the last time you saw an apple in CRC broadcasting? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. An apple a day. No, the, the, the doctors would would live here <laughs> if they could. It's just... <laughs> there is money to be made. Brunswick says, Randy, my kids are in the car. Yes. What did? Did I say something? Could you please horrible? refrain from using such potty mouth language? Potty mouth. What did I say? I don't know. I was just saying that we, we need to strap it on and let's go. Strap them pads on. Yes. Get that strap on going. Oh, let's no, go. No. Let's strap it on and let's get let's go, start playing football. Let's strap it on. Here we go. The big one. Strap it on. Go ahead. Let's go. In your understand. mind, are some of the football pads made of silicon rubber? Well, well, no. Okay. Why would you say that? Big George says, I actually want there to be more than just one game on Christmas. There needs to be like three games, like Thanksgiving. I rely on those games, so I don't have to put up with my nagging family on Christmas. Big George, just tune to the NBA on Christmas. Isn't oh, the yeah. NBA? It, it, it's NFL all day. Christmas day, right? So you just watch the basketball, and if you want to watch the football more, jump over to the football, and then when the football's done, Jump back to the basketball. You don't have to talk to a single family member the entire day. Yeah, Big George not allowed to jump. He's too big. There is a lot of ways to avoid your family if you want to. Yeah, mm. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. If, if sports is your usual shield, yeah. the NBA is also doing a thing on there's Christmas as well. Sports and there's uh, like Chinese food. You could go out for Chinese food. You could avoid the family that way. That's a good point. All I know is I love football, and if they do more football, I'm not mad about it. If it's going to be a good game, I'll watch it. If it's not a good game, all right, I'm not going to watch it. Denny's is open, I believe, on Christmas Den Day. Denny's is open, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brunswick guy says, man, I always thought Randy was a religious man. What? I don't know. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know. So I uh, remember uh, what I was just telling you a second ago there. Uh, Brock Purdy got himself a million and a half dollars for being the Super Bowl runner-up this year. And uh, while uh, other people got tons of money for doing nothing. Well, it don't feel too bad for him because it turns out he does have a new sponsor. He does have a new sponsor. Purdy has teamed up with Pioneer Seeds as a spokesperson for corn seed. What? Yeah, he's a uh, he's a corn seed uh, uh, spokesman. Pioneer. Wait, what? Hmm. Hmm. That wow. If you're a farmer listening, you're like, oh, oh, I know that seed. The rest of us don't know anything. What you're saying? He really Hi, bought into Purdy. Iowa. That's a uh, Super Bowl runner up uh, a quarterback. Uh, when I plant, I plant Pioneer. I don't get it. Isn't I don't, it just I'm not weird? Getting Pioneer connection. corn. Brock I'm not getting the connection from here. So well, how? Well, his, his girlfriend's family has a farm in Iowa. And he was out there. He's been spotted shooting a uh, John Deere commercial uh, along with Colton McKivitz on the streets of San Francisco. Uh, so right. he's going to do John Deere. He's doing corn. I, I don't know why he's a lightning rod for agricultural uh, type stuff, but he Iowa is. State, Iowa State. But uh, didn't he go to Iowa State? There you go. go to Iowa You're right, State. You're right. But, it's Caitlin okay. Clark's uh, pal, too. Well, well, Caitlin Clark went to Iowa. She's which is, to Iowa. No, 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 no state. But They're the in the is, same area. Caitlin, Iowa's not that big a place. That's true. But Caitlin is from Des Moines. <laughs> like they, they were playing the Final Four in Cleveland, Ohio. And Caitlin Clark said, with the straightest look on her face, this is the coolest city I've ever been in. Mm. Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, Cleveland. So I get that for her. If those commercials were her, that would make sense somehow. Well, Brock, like Brock is not from there. He just Brock, went to college if there. somebody offers you uh, a bunch of money no, and some free seed for your girlfriend's oh, no. family, you take well, it. You, 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 you take, take it. the money. I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong. I'm trying to understand so, why all the agricultural places said, you know what? We know what athlete would best push forward our brand, you know, Brock Purdy. I Ms. just don't. Kim, Ms. Kim is trying to plant a, a, a one of those, uh, what do you call those, above ground uh, uh, gardens? A garden? Yeah. Uh, no, it's an above box ground. Box garden? Uh, yeah, one of those. Mm. And uh, illegal pot grower? 
because I'm in the radio. Uh, well, no, not oh. pods uh, above ground garden. You yeah, know, man, that's... <laughs> if I call up Brock Purdy, yeah, uh, because you know I know uh, one of his uh, former uh, football. Uh, uh, he used to work with us. Uh, the uh, the gold mm-hmm. gun. Uh, if I called him up, you think he could get me some no, of that uh, no, minor think, corn seed? I don't think so. For Miss Kim's garden, I, I I have doubts. Maybe like probably, a 50, probably 50 pound bag of that corn seed. No, nah, it's probably like no percent. I like corn. Yeah. I mean, I mean, let's. I I mean, I'll plant I that just, in my backyard. When I was like a kid, I, I planted a corn nut and it grew. A corn nut. Yeah. What did it grow into? A little corn plant. I'm not kidding. Huh? I did that. It was a, it, it was a it thing. grew into a corn plant. <laughs> okay, well, hear me out. It came the corn nuts came with a seed. They're like, here, uh, plant your own corn nuts. It was like this little thing. I'm like, all right. So I did it in the backyard and I cared for it, and the thing actually grew into a plant. And it was it was it was starting to make a little corn. Did you, did you harvest anything? It fell over in a monsoon. So. Oh damn! <laughs> that was I guess I didn't p- plant it deep. I was I was 12, damn. so that's too bad. Did anybody else do that when they were kids? I don't know if uh. If, if, that would have been 1981, two, three, something like that. I don't know. Feel alone mm-hmm. in the world now. No, I didn't dream I, it. I, never, I know I, I did, that. did that. I mean, no. Anyway, yeah. so Brock Birdie, he's, well, I mean, he's got sponsors. I mean, good, yeah. good for him for getting getting sponsors. Like, get your money, however you got to get it. I'm you just, I'm maybe... just interested in why they, you know, all of the agricultural well, advertisers keyed in on him uh, specifically. He's, uh, he's also got Alaska Airlines, Buffalo okay. Wild Wings, and uh, Toyota. So uh, those are the those are all the, he's got a bunch of sponsors. Is so, he the voice of that Buffalo on Buffalo Wild Wings? Because I thought it sounded yes, familiar. That is that's, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy. That is Brock Purdy. Hmm. You are correct. Thought that was who it was. Hmm. Niners sixteen eighty says he farms in the off season with his in laws. Yeah, that's what I said. But so, that's not something that's so well known about him that you could actually put his face on on something and somebody's going to go, "That's Brock Purdy." I'm buying a John Deere. I'm not saying that he oh, doesn't ever farm. I'm just saying, who is? Uh, ooh, they're like uh, we can't find anyone in the NFL whiter. Hey, Brock Purdy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's like he's, hey. he's been incredibly successful, but he's only been in the league three years. The overlap think- of people who would be convinced to buy a tractor because Brock Purdy is the guy telling them to buy it can't be that big a group you, of people. You think because we're Brock Purdy's hometown radio station, he'd, he'd give us a, a, a couple of uh, no. John Deere's? Yeah, I would, yeah they, my, maybe my, we could get I a would, couple of I John would Deere's guess, out of them. Oh, some rider mowers. Yeah, yeah. Those. Oh, there we go. There we go. I don't yeah. have that big yard, but I'd I certainly either, use but... the rider mower. Hell yes, we would. Rico mm-hmm. Suave says, I planted a bunch of seeds as a youth. I have 11 children now. Not those kinds of seeds, Rico. No. Uh, nondescript says, an above garden, uh, above ground garden. Yeah. So not a cemetery. No, no. Uh, no. Navy Devil says, according to the sign, we stopped at the world's largest truck stop in Iowa to get fuel once. Huh. For, according to the sign. Okay. The world's largest truck stop is in Iowa? That's what the sign There's said. There's just nothing else Why there. would it be in Iowa? Because everybody's passing through. Nobody's staying. You, you'd mm. be better off putting your resources into the truck stop. Okay. Hefty Lefty <laughs> says, below ground gardens only grow tubers and carrots, other root vegetables. Thank you, Happy Lefty. Hmm. The Jet says Brock Purdy, uh, well, he kind of looks like a farmer, so it works. You know, how many farmers are, well, how many farmers are as short as Kyler Murray? I've never seen a farmer that short. I don't know what that yeah, is. I mean, there must have been Kyler one. Murray. Never. Farming is one of the oldest professions. He'd be like trying to get in the damn tractor, never get up there, never get up there. The little legs just kicking the entire time, and all the stuff in the field would die. No. Ringless Joe says some seeds are pioneers, if you know what I mean. What? I have no idea what you mean. What does that mean? I don't know what he means. That's what I just said. What? I don't know what he means. Mm. I'm thinking about what he means, but it's not coming to me. Thank God there's only 15 means. minutes of this left. When we come back, we'll give you your 15 minutes. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. At Progressive, we know money can't buy happiness. But money did buy your boat, where you find peace fishing, unlike at home with three teenage daughters. Because fish never argue about who stole whose crop top, or get mad the other fish used up all the hot water. No, they just swim around, never embarrassed to be seen with you in public. So save money by bundling your boat or RV insurance with Homer Auto from Progressive. And buy more happiness, or something close to it. 
Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every home run, every hit, every inning, every play from the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a walk-off grand slam or a base hit to center field. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only must be physically located in Arizona. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. Need a boost in capital or a flexible line of credit for your growing business? Hi, I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital. I can help you get the money you need fast. The process is a breeze with a simple application and same day approvals. No more waiting, no more hassle. Just a straightforward path to securing the funds you need faster and easier than asking your banker. So call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. That's 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. Let's clear out winter and clean up the lawn. With spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot. Right now, get the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower for just $89 and make your lawn work easier with the powerful 90 miles an hour of clearing power. Plus, you can buy it online and pick it up in store, getting you outside sooner. Get your yard spring ready with the Ryobi One Plus Leaf Blower, now just $89 during spring Black Friday at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. See store homedepot.com slash delivery for details. Everybody's got a podcast these days. Comedy, politics, true crime, you name it. But how many actually teach you anything useful? Harman Solar has an entertaining podcast that is vital if you've been thinking about looking into solar, but you don't know where to start. Ralph and Ben explore the intricacies of utilities, equipment, processes, and more. Their primary objective is to educate and empower you to make informed decisions on your solar journey. So increase your knowledge, not your bills. Go check it out right now. It's the Harman Solar Podcast at harmansolar.com. You're expanding your business and need to add to your fleet. Maybe you need another semi-truck or trailer. Don't have the cash? I can help. I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital, and we offer no money down financing on new and used trucks and trailers. Whether you're an owner operator or a fleet manager, I'll get the vehicles you need with a simple application and same day approval. It's faster and easier than asking your banker. Call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. KQFN Tempe. Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM. And K24EU Fountain Hills at 95.9 FM. It's time for the third. Because it's time. time for what? Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. All right, everybody. It's five o'clock here on the Daily Blender. I'm your good friend, your radio pal, Jeffrey O'Brien, alongside Randy White. Got Keon Rose in the control room, and you guys are on the Fanatic text line, 888-368-1580, as we broadcast live in the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale for 15 more minutes. Coming up, uh, game two of the final four of hockey, the Frozen Four. I'll be honest, I don't know who's playing. But it, uh, we are contractually obligated to carry it. And we we uh, got out of carrying the first game, and then the first game, uh, we, well, yeah, I don't know what's happening there either. So the the, the first game came to us. Yeah, uh, through our <laughs> golf updates because Westwood One had a boo boo. Uh, anyway, so that's all taken care of. But uh, hopefully everything will go fine, and you'll listen to some fine college hockey up next. And then on Saturday we'll have the championship game of the NCAA uh, hockey tournament thing. So uh, anyway, so we got I uh, got a few minutes here before uh, we step aside. Quiet Cannon says, "Hey, Randy." Is that your voice in, 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 uh, in, that announces the third hour? No. No, that's actually the guy from the Cardinals, Quiet Cannon. It's, uh, yeah. Jim Barnett. It's a uh, card, card's voice. Yeah. He yeah. Uh, he listens to the show every now and then, and he was driving along, and he said, hey, it's me. I'm Jim Barnett. And we're like, oh, my God, it's the Cardinals guy. In fact, his texture yeah. nickname is Card's Voice. And we said, hey, do you think you could do that for us? And we asked him to do it, and he did it, and much to our surprise. And so it's been part of the show ever since. So that's uh, the great Jim Barnett uh, doing yes. his third down. And by the way, I'm just going to say this. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to kiss up. We already got the clip. 
Uh, but uh, Jim Barnett, when you hear him do it at the Cardinals game, epic. But you've got people who copy him and try to oh, yeah. be like him. Yeah, they can't do it. Oh, it's not as good. No. Other guys do the third down. It's not anywhere near right. I think uh, Bruce Arians wanted that in Tampa Bay because when he went over there, started hearing a guy in Tampa Bay doing it, but he was like, third down. And you're like, oh, Ooh. that's just. <laughs> then you get people that kind of do it like, they, like a growl. Third down. This is not as good as Jim it's Barnett. Not, their voice is not naturally deep enough, and mm-hmm. so they, they try to make By up the way, for it in other ways. And it uh, sounds coming up, all Coming up here momentarily. Yeah. Right now, Denver and Boston University are playing yeah. in game one. It's a it's in a one one tie currently. Uh, they're in overtime. Oh, they went to uh, overtime. And and you might get to hear some of it when we cut away. Coming up, it'll be number one seed Boston College facing off against the Wolverines of Michigan in game two. Ooh. So okay. <laughs> gotcha. So anyway, thought I'd look that up for you. We're contractually obligated to tear away at uh, five fifteen. Yeah. Um, don't know what's going to happen when we get there. Be honest. Third down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. A quiet cannon. That's the great Jim Barnett. It's not me. But thank you, though. I'm uh, honored that you would think that was me. Well, uh, quiet cannon says, well, Randy, being a staunch Cardinal fan, has agreed yeah. that I can call yeah. him wild card Randy. When did you guys make that ag- agreement? Well, I mean, the other day, uh, you, I, I don't know. You weren't here, I don't think. Yeah, as long as Randy's okay with it. I'm okay with him because he says I'm wild and free. So okay. he wants to call me wild card Randy. All righty. Dropping the soap says, do you know how OJ is going to fit in that casket? Like a glove. Thank you, dropping the soap. <laughs> oh, brother. So so not quite in the casket? Mm. Yeah, it's mm. not going to fit. Mm. Uh, Ringless <laughs> Joe says, you get to see some third down a lot at the Cardinals games. A lot of three and outs. It's true. But that's – he only – I don't know. He, I think no, he says I, it when they're on defense. I don't think he I yells mean, that on offense. Yeah, I, I, he doesn't right? do he that, do that on uh, when the Cardinals are on offense. No, yeah, that'd be rude. Yeah. Uh, Navy Devils, like, yeah, hockey overtime. Yay. <sighs> Hamilton Porter says, it's the Frozen Four. My Michigan Wolverines versus Boston College. It should be a good hockey game if you like the hockey. Lots of future NHL talent in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He also says cancer didn't kill OJ. Cancer just wrote a book about how it would kill OJ if it did <laughs> kill OJ. <laughs> All these jokes are coming. <laughs> that's that's got to be up there for text of the day. I, I'd say that's one of my favorite uh, OJ jokes right now. Wilbur says, good God, are you guys going to also carry the girls over 35 uh, miles per hour slow pitch uh, softball championship? Yes. How did you know? Well, there is some women's baseball in June. Yeah. <laughs> that we have to carry. <laughs> that we are contractually obligated to carry. Is it women's baseball or is it the uh, softball World Series? I'll be honest, I don't know. I think it's baseball. I could be wrong. I, I, mm. I would you would mm. I would think it would be softball because that would be No the... crying in baseball. Yeah, there's no not supposed to be. Yeah. No. The Jet says, Keon, do you know what the oldest profession is? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's it's prostitution. <laughs> How'd that come up? Why did that come up? Well, I said that farming is one of the oldest <laughs> no. professions. I did so. I, how did I know that was going to come? <laughs> how did I know that was going to happen? <laughs> so I, uh, I, you know, can I just be honest with you guys about something? I'm supposed sure. to be losing some weight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because I got the high blood pressure and then going to the cardiologist. And when I went and saw him like six months ago, he's like, yeah, hey, you're doing all right. But you got to lose some of that weight there. You got to start exercising. And I haven't. Uh oh. And I realized why. I don't want to. I oh, just it yeah. just doesn't seem mm. I just I'm not motivated. Yeah. I just I I and I told my wife, I'm like, I just it's I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't get motivated. I just I don't want to. And I think it's the time of day. I think it's the time of day. And I just found something out. I think I'm just instinctively trying to save my own life. Because a new study tracked people for eight years and they found that people who exercise in the evening have a 61 percent lower risk of death from any cause compared to people who don't exercise and uh, everyone who exercised was better off but people who exercised in the morning and afternoon only had lower risks of 33 percent and 40 percent but if you did it in the evening 
61% lower risk of death. Wow. So I need to get off the show at six and start exercising then. Well, well, today you can get off in about uh, five minutes, seven minutes. But I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got to eat dinner and I got to let that wear off. And then, ah. then I got to exercise. But then I'm mm. tired and then I'm sleeping. So I don't know if I could get myself to do it. That's the time to do it is in the mm. evening because that helps. Here's what they say. The data suggests that it could be because our bodies are primed to handle blood sugar better later in the day, mm. you know? And uh, so, you know, if you're exercising in the evening, it might actually lower your blood pressure throughout the night and in the next morning because, you know, the cause and effect of that. So I'm just, I don't know, maybe I got to start thinking about exercising in the evening instead of trying to force myself to do it uh, earlier in the morning. I, yeah, that's, yes. that's mm. what I do. I'm not a morning person, though. So, like, I just can't. Sure exercise in the morning <laughs> the uh, study also found that the frequency of exercise how often you move seemed to matter more for health uh, than the uh, duration of the activity just mm. making sure you're doing it not how long you're doing it mm. so but yeah I, I don't know maybe i just maybe i should do the show on a treadmill hey that's an idea probably if i'm so distracted by bad headphones i don't know how the hell I'm yeah gonna do that. it just seems like a lot of extra thought really i mean you're not thinking actively but it's always going to be passively back there and if something distracts you and then you you slip on the treadmill that's going to be mm. that's going to be an embarrassing way to go out I, I i wouldn't wish that on anybody true you know old little foo he had a heart attack on his treadmill i didn't know that he was in great shape he's like i'm running on the treadmill i got oh that, that hurts and then next thing you know he uh, had to go to the hospital he lived but uh, it was scared the hell out of all of us. Yeah. Mm. So then I look at that treadmill and I'm like, you're not going to get me. <laughs> Noah says, so what you guys are saying is I should have sex with my wife in the evening hours opposed to the morning and afternoon. It's better for my health, honey. I think you just get well, that whenever make, you can. Yeah, Noah. you you make the argument that works for you. I yeah. don't want to be held legally responsible for Anything you say to your wife. Ringless Joe says it would be pretty funny if he did say it when the Cardinals were on offense. Maybe it'd make him play better. Third down. Hey, man. Yeah, that'd be kind of like he's heckling him. <laughs> Rico Suave says, can I get a cold one? Randy, working in attics today doing HVAC. Ooh. Ooh. I'm so sorry. It's not the day to do it, man. Oh, Mid 90s today. Lord, they, wow. they really could have hired you. Wow. A month ago. God, respect, man. Respect and yeah. get out of that business before it's too late. No kidding. Navy Devil says the keyboard player in Ramstein uh, walks on a treadmill during concerts. I guess it keep you keep your blood, your heart rate up, whatever. I don't know. Whatever makes that work for him. How old is he? And what's Ramstein? It's a, it's a band. It's like a heavy metal, death metal thing or something. Oh, I couldn't tell you what music they actually play. Well, you say Ramstein or Stein. Ramstein. It, it sounds like that. I just don't want to say it and then just be insanely That's, wrong. That sounds like a blah, 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 kind of thing. So, just, Randy, bring up some Ramstein. Mm, Steam. I don't know which one it is. I don't have Ramstein. Mm. Rico Suave says I should get one of them desk ellipticals. So then I'm like doing like this the whole show. <laughs> Hitting the mic with my face all the time. No, I don't know, I'll trying to find Ramstein here. Gonna pass on that. I'm getting to a certain age where I got to be careful. You, listen, let me to explain you something to you. There's a certain age you get to where you got to be careful because uh, all of a sudden uh, you're falling down and crap. I mean, I, I've had a, a fall or two, but uh, it, it, if you're like, oh, you wimp. No, no, listen. Remember back in January when Keanu Reeves was seen on, on crutches and everybody's like, oh, he must have got that uh, uh, during uh, John Wick. No. Uh, he tripped on a rug and yeah. fractured his kneecap. It was on the set of a different movie called Good Fortune. It was just like a rom-com thing, right? Oh, man. And about 15 days in the shooting, they're like, hey, you can go to your trailer. And he's like, all right, man, I'll see you. He turns and Wah! tripped on a rug and pow, he broke his knee. And, hmm. uh, you know, and in this movie, he was playing an angel. <laughs> well, that's not good. That's not good at all. Ramstein. All right. Is it clean? It's called Deutschland. Oh, 
Is this like weird Nazi music or something? I want to play it if it's like weird Nazi music. I don't think Plus that's what it is, but I, I don't know. Swazman says Ramstein is a, a army base in Germany. It is, yeah, as well. Yeah. Navy Devil says, "Nah, it's a metal band from Germany." That don't yeah. sound very metal to me. Sounds a little weak to me. Well, let's, you got to build up to it. Let's hear how they, they sing. The German uh, electro industrial steamrollers. Do they ever sing? Oh, jeez, I don't know. Um, Josef, the <laughs> friendly German, is here. Uh oh. Hans, yeah, do host, do do host, do do host, Mitch, do host, Mitch, do. I better hit the translate. I've no, no idea. Man, I know. Oh yeah, gibberish as far as I know. Hold on here. Nine, nine. Yeah. Oh, right, he's just singing the music here. He says, "You, you have, you have me, you have me. You asked me, you asked me, you asked me." I didn't say anything. Do you want to be faithful to her for all days until death do you part? No, huh. no. Is he oh, marrying well. somebody horrible, right now, or horrible. what the hell's going on? Lyrics are bad. Yeah, yeah that's, that's probably Ramstein right there. I have then. no idea yeah. what they're saying. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> speaking of German. Yeah. Ringless yeah. Joe says being a Suns fan is associated with an increased heart attack risk whenever they're playing a game. Oh boy. Yeah. Especially well, when they're playing a team that they should absolutely beat by 25. Yeah. That's when that, that's when your blood pressure is the highest cuz yeah. There's no guarantee they're winning that one. Rico Suave says I'm going to be 50 in June and I work hard labor jobs. Mm. We salute you Rico Suave. Yeah. We we salute you. That's we, impressive. Yeah. yeah. We'll give you another I have never worked a hard labor job, really, Rico Suave. Well, I don't know about that. Yes, you have. Yeah, you have. I work a uh, brain oh, job. You have. You have. You've worked hard. I didn't say I didn't work hard. I just haven't yeah. physically worked hard like him. You had a construction job for you a day. I quit. For a while. <laughs> you delivered pizzas for a while. Ah, oh, crap. Where did on this day? Oh, did, I didn't get on this day in sports history. Well, then day. that's Big George's fault. You can't be mad. No, Big I'm George. sure he sent it. Oh. I just, I didn't see it. <laughs> I tried to get you off the hook. Uh, in 1947, the Brooklyn jo- Dodgers, Jackie Robinson, became the first black player to take the field in a Major League Baseball team. Bam! Did it. Done. See you guys tomorrow. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic. This Saturday, the best college hockey has to offer. Take the ice in the NCAA Hockey Championship game. Puck drop at 245 on 1580 and 993. The Fanatic. It'll go first shot score! Top shelf, it's Luke Tuck, a shorthanded goal to start the scoring here in the Frozen Four. one nothing. Boston University, 12-15 to play in the first. Tenth goal of the season for Luke Tuck, and it was one nothing BU after one. The Terriers this season, 19-1 when leading after the first period. Matt Brown really saved the day for Denver in that opening period. He had nine saves. He continued to come up big in net until the Pioneers finally broke through in the second period. Back to the far point. Taken there by Denver. Denver up the far board. Carries deep into the corner. Nothing there. Hudson gave it away behind the goal. Centering pass out front. Shot. Score! It's tied. One to one. Tristan Lemire right atop the goal crease. Knots it up for Denver. 439 to go here in period number two. So the highest scoring team in the country finally on the board. Just the second goal of the season for Tristan Lemire. 1-1 the score, and Denver was looking for more before the end of the second. Green off the glass, high all the way down, and it will carry them in towards Davis, so there's no icing. But BU changes. Davis lead pass Devine. Devine at 2-on-1. Feathers it out front. Backhand shot. Karan across the goal crease. It's robbery. Karan made the save, sprawling across with his glove. The save of the year keeps it tied. Matthew Karan, the Brown transfer, keeping the game 